I don't know who's just here. He always let's start this show, man. Yeah, hey, we always start shit late. Like we, I don't know. He stepped out. I don't know. I haven't seen him. It's like Probably a couple or some shit. I'll be yeah. back. Y'all ordered something? Yo, pop. Let's start the show, man. Yo, where he at? Yo. Told you stop eating all that cheese, man. Yo. Yo. I guess he, he might maybe not even in here. Welcome back to What You Thought, the show about everything and nothing at the same time. I'm Darnell. The Express is moving. <laughs> yeah, I got, I got it down now. It's on cue. That's nasty. <laughs> it's on cue. Um, but I've noticed it really has made a difference in the past two episodes. I told them like, comment, and subscribe, and the likes have actually gone up. So I'm gonna tell you again: like, comment, subscribe. Mm. Um, let's keep this thing, thing moving, growing. Yeah. For us. I no, mean, no pun obviously, <laughs> like no pun the pod only functions if people are engaging. So if you like the show and you want to keep watching it, that is true. the least you could do. And we'll talk about the elephant in the room or the missing elephant in the room. <laughs> 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 Pop is out today due to health and, and protocol uh, things. You so, finally fired him. I mean, it was one He's too, gone. He, it was one too many pauses. Yeah. Pause! <laughs> nah, um, so now I'm just biding my time. I'm next. So the couch is going to be completely empty. Nah. Eventually, the, the couch is going to be gone completely. Yeah. And it's just going to be one couch facing this way. We don't have any any sponsors. We don't, have enough, we don't get enough donations. Our YouTube is never monetized. So I kept it like... Condense, so I'm about to just sit over there at Reg. <laughs> You're about to get close, Reg. Nah, you're good. It's about to be the episode good. today, me and it's you. It's still two couches. <laughs> it's going to be me and you couches. today. Nah, you're good. <laughs> What's wrong with this? You're good. You're making me uncomfortable. You, have, you still even have more when, space than you usually when, have. I know, but even with me and Pop, like, I don't know if you can tell, we we make a, a concerted effort to give each other a, as much space as Pop possible. Pop takes up way more space than I do, so you have mad space I know, space but you're, you're still sitting close to me, though. We're it's good. odd. He does take up more space, but he still again, gives me more you room. You should totally fluff his pillow. Nah, please do Crazy, this is the good camera, too. I know. Yeah, that is the good camera. This is the good camera. Yeah. I, I'm Man. super uncomfortable right now. And this thing is talking about fluff and pillow. He wants to you sit, gotta, like, he low key wants, wants to sit, sit next pillow. to you, so y'all should just sit together. That's the Corey seat. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, I'm going back. And you fucked up the, the temporary oh, yeah, pop yeah. shrine. <laughs> Buy next now. Yeah. Sponsored by yeah. COVID 19. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by. Oh, man. We got Omar, a.k.a. John Jacob, Jingo Hammer Schmidt in the building, What's a.k.a. going on? What's going on? Nipolis Cage. <laughs> Jack Nipolis. <laughs> how, many, how many DMs and stuff have you gotten about that since the... Since None. Been, been None. Revealed? None, really? None about that. Since the great reveal. Yeah. Yeah, no, because the, the thing is, and I know we weren't talking about it last week, it was hilarious because I don't know if people caught it. You said you had, like, <laughs> yeah. almost no ear piercings. <laughs> Low, no ear low. We did and the then, math. And then you had seven piercings, we but they were the only on one side of your body. Yeah, so only which, on the left. which almost leaves virtually nothing else to be pierced. That was I was mostly in my. No, ear. you didn't have to be specific. Like I was asking. <laughs> you don't have to tell us what was pierced. It was like five. But it leaves, <laughs> it leaves but, almost no, no, nothing but, else but, to be pierced. Red, there's a lot to the imagination. Main factor, he said lobe. Yeah, no lobe. His lobe, so okay, yeah. I was like, all right, so Carlin. all yeah. seven was in the. I'm, I don't want any so, further. Yeah, that's what it was, baby. And, nothing. And, and then all seven. You had here you had nipple. seven pierces in your ear. Come on, I had five in my ear. One. You're time. asking too much, Reg. You're, You're right. Asking You're too right. Much, You're right. Reg. But this is your fault. <laughs> this is your fault. I just wanted to assume the seven in the ear, no lobe. Because you're a good know. friend and you want to give him the benefit no, of the doubt. No, I, I was, don't want to know. Okay, <laughs> it, was, it was four to five in the ear. Most of it was in my cartilage or the helix, right. like they call it. All right, you're right. He also said yeah. septum. 
Yeah, I had my nose pierced too. But that's that's technically not the left side. No, that's, that's in the, the center. You're right. You're right. But I did have my septum pierced as well. Wait. Y'all getting too far. Because then you're going to Yeah, I know, but I'm He just, had the one back dimple. No, it's like, the thing is crazy is like, Amar, Amar is like my friend in real life. And there's just like mad shit so, I so just don't know about. So were fake life? No, <laughs> I mean, just outside, of, outside of like prior to the pod and everything, Got of course it. we're all friends in real life. I'm just saying like, Brad, I don't be like <laughs> yeah, chilling yeah. with you all the time. You got it. I mean, if you want to <laughs> hang out, like, I mean, we can hang out, I guess. But it's, all right. <laughs> But, but you're asking too many questions. You're asking too much. You was around but it's all just the time. Like, you're gonna you're gonna get answers you don't want to get. That's true. But I'm just saying, like his past is a mystery. Because at one yeah. point, I think he said twelve. No, nah, that wasn't that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when he was ran getting out a haircut. Spots, Brad. I ran First out of toe piercing. I ran, no, I ran, yeah. I ran out of real estate. That's crazy. I ran First out of real estate. toe piercing. <laughs> <laughs> like the nigga secretly had his toe ring this whole time that no one knew about. Like Fab, get the ankle bracelet. <laughs> Man, that ankle bracelet Attached. out of pocket. Yeah, that was kind of wild. <laughs> no comment. Nah, people gotta stop letting slide with that. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of wild. Ankle bracelet is nasty. <laughs> Mad 90s. <laughs> Mad 90s. The episode yeah. just started. I'm out of Red Bull. All he needed is a pair of jellies. <laughs> For some Chinese slippers. <laughs> That'd be crazy. The girls that used to wear Chinese slippers with the dirty heels back in the day, oh crazy. my God, it was nasty. That was Rain- a rainbow. Thing. The dirty nah. heels? Like I was nah, dirty nah, it was mad. nah, it was mad chicks up in New York who had dirty heels, my name. Nah, nah, nah. Nah, come on, stop lying. Not outside the Bronx. You didn't care. You didn't care. They wasn't in Queens. Right. You just didn't look at their feet. You didn't care. Nah, I do look at feet. Yeah. I actually, feet, feet matters. It's a thing for me. It's, it, it is a thing. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Like, it's a thing, it matters, but it's not like a thing for me. You said it like a fetish kind of. Well, what's a fetish? Never mind. <laughs> what's a fetish? <laughs> <laughs> what's a fetish? That's a good question. Uh, but Never no, mind. no DMs about that. But I have gotten a lot of DMs, uh, more so about the uh, clothing and, and goods and services for black owned businesses. So I will say, keep sending them. Today I'm wearing a black owned brand. My, sweater, my hoodie says, um, We create the art and we start the trends. Um, it's a company called Grow Home. Grow home, please. Black woman owned brand. But keep sending them. I'm trying to come up with a way to share all these brands. There's like maybe 50 different companies yeah. that have reached out. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way to, to share it to the people. Because nice. I can't wear them all. That's dope. Maybe yeah. we'll do like a monthly list kind of thing. Yeah, so absolutely. Right now, I'm, I'm recording Derek recording. <laughs> levels of this. Because yeah. uh, he, he gets almost no camera time. Yeah. We got... Derek, a.k.a. Hands, doing yeah. four jobs today <laughs> for at one. Just real quick, let them know you're alive. Just say yo. Derek, That's just, it. Just, just say yo. Oh, yo. Wait, wait. Why oh, did you catch that? That might be the wait, first. Is, did he break the mic? Derek. <laughs> just wait, my guy. The first time uh, wait, we Say heard something him speak. to the mic. You're, yo. oh, That's fuck. the most you're going to get out of this. He's alive. <laughs> He's alive. He's focused right now. He's still got a clap. Hard, for okay. Working hard. <laughs> clap for the people. Appreciate it, Derek. The room is light today. Mad light. It was super We got light. Bradley, a.k.a. Double Room on the audio. So hey. if the audio's going to sound good today. <laughs> Not so much noise in here. In fact, <laughs> we got Reg growing in the Jadakus hair today. I see you. All right. <laughs> Jada could do it. You could do it. Because B was supposed to cut my head. This nigga ravaged the whole <laughs> podcast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> B just dismantled us with one cough. It's over. <laughs> A.K.A. Patient Zero. And dismantled you know, the whole room. The funny part about Baif being Patient Zero is he was a doctor in the skit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then... Infecting just, everybody. Which, which furthermore says, out. do not take medical advice from us. Yeah, do yeah, not take not, medical advice from us We're not the guys all. for that. At all. I'll Except for today. <laughs> Look, I'll take another. <laughs> <laughs> Except for today, because today we're telling niggas to go get vaccinated. Yes, yes. Please. <laughs> Please, go get vaccinated. And I'm speaking directly to B. Like, I don't really care about anyone else. Please go get vaccinated. Nah, I'm going I'm to get the fucking Katniss Evergreen bow and arrow and shoot it. <laughs> uh, you knew her, like, whole name. It's a good book. Funny? It's a great book. I knew that because I just finished watching Hawkeye, and he mentioned Katniss Evergreen in there. Oh, is that that's on now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, dope. Check that out. First two episodes, right? Yeah. It's yeah. mid. No, so, uh, never mind. I'll be honest. I was hoping it was good. Do you want to participate today? What's going on? Who are you texting? You. Oh. I just sent you the video. 
Oh, thank you. Uh, dickhead. <laughs> wow. There goes the sponsors. <laughs> For real, we're, trying, we're trying to get a green Dallas on this week. I know. Just that quick. But that's, that's like an insult I could never use with Pop. <laughs> oh, I was so Like, you got to get all the, everything, get everything that, here, everything here. that we're trying to say. He's here, though. Pause! <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Pop, man. Yeah, man. The Lord of the Large and Lovelies. <laughs> 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 we got this little shrine in your seat today. Um, but on a serious matter, uh, condolences to Virgil's friends and family and yeah. his passing. Um, the thing that kind of struck me about Virgil's passing was one, not just his age, but just kind of the, the journey. Like, Because apparently he found out he was sick with this rare cancer in 2019. Yeah, rather recent. Yeah, last He became year. the head of Louis Vuitton and had his first show that was 2018, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it, so it's just like you worked so much to get to that point and then yeah. you find out. You know that? That must have been... The worst like, possible news. Yeah. But, hey, he definitely lived the most of his life and like yeah. it makes sense why he was putting out so much and stuff like and that. doing so. so much work. I mean, it's sad, but at the same time, like, you know, he left a legacy and to be able to do so much with so little time, he's done more in that, I guess, that two years than a lot of people do in their lifetimes. He was able to leave like a legacy. I'm sure his family's probably going to be super well taken care of and he's basically changed their lives. Um, the takeaway for me is like every time we realize somebody's about to pass or is passing, that's when all the the love and the accolades and the whatever, like I think we should try our best to, I mean, and I know it's not easy because you're in the middle of life and you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow and to just run around showing everybody love all the time just seems like this ridiculous concept. But if there's something to be said, you should probably say it yeah. when you have the chance. Absolutely, I definitely agree. And, and again, I wanna second that uh, prayers and condolences to the family. He was, Survived by a wife and two children, Shannon and Lo and Gray. Um, I think what what came to mind for me is that we keep losing all these black men. We keep losing these change makers, these trailblazers. Um, what we had about a week week or so ago, Dolph was was killed. He was taken from us, and he was doing a lot yeah. in his community. We've had over these past years, Nipsey, who's doing a lot in his community. These change makers. We've had Chaz, Chadwick also go tragically. Um, we've just had a lot of passings, and these are people who are able to platform build and create opportunities and and create a legacy. And before they can really that 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 legacy can be realized, um, they're gone. And so yeah, it was sad. It was definitely tough when I got this news of all these celebrity passings. This one was definitely a tough one. I'm in fashion, and so I understand the impact that he's had. But um, you know, prayers and condolences. Yeah, him. Selling a part of Off White actually makes, makes way sense more now. sense now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and we'll but see he where he sold it. Goes. No, he didn't sell all of it, but he but, sold us a, a pretty big chunk of it, which, like, you know, it, it makes a little bit more sense now. Right. But And that's why he, he didn't sell his name at all. Yeah. Which is smart. Yeah. yeah. And, and to everybody, can, especially black men, continue to go to your doctors and get checked. He died from a very rare cancer. It was cardiac angiosarcoma. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I read that. What is, what is that? Basically, it impacts your heart. It, it starts to shut down one of the ventricles in your heart, um, making it impossible to get uh, adequate blood flow. So, Shit. But I'm sure somebody in the comments will probably give us a little bit more information. But, um, again, cardiac angiosarcoma. So I had never heard of it prior to yesterday. I, I, I read it on the way in. That's like, crazy. Damn. Yeah. Um, it's so, it was also cardiac. I was like, it had to be. You knew it was the heart, yeah. But, like, one thing, like, that I've taken away from, like, all these situations, kind of, it's like, because when you're younger and stuff like that, you think death is so far away. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? But nobody knows really how close it is. No, not at all. You know, so that's why a lot of it is, like, make the most of the time while you're here. You know? Yeah. And even in, in this case here today, when we weren't going to do the, the pie without Pop, yeah. and Pop was like, nah, we got to keep the show. You know what I mean? The show must go on. show yeah. must go on. Like, you know, like, make the most of it. And it, it's right. We got to do that in certain cases. So let's keep making the most of it every day, yeah. even whatever you do, you know? Absolutely. So like if you guys have like any type of secret admiration for me, please share that. Share that now. <laughs> <laughs> All the accolades and the compliments. Everything? Yeah, just go, go share that. Uh -huh. Share that I'll, now. I'll bring some flowers for you the next uh, pot. All right. 
No, I'm no, you don't. Crazy. You can just give me compliments. You don't have nah, to bring me actual, actual flowers. flowers. No, nah, I'm good. Matter I'm giving you an edible range. Those are like the crazy. worst gifts. Like it's not a practical <laughs> gift. <laughs> what? <laughs> like flowers. You said they're the worst gift? No, it's a horrible gift. First of all, if you're giving me flowers, you're making me responsible for something that I didn't ask you for. Now I have to water them. I have to figure out where to put them. Like, that's a whole job. Like, I have to buy a vase or some shit. Like, that's very inconsiderate. And then they're going to die. It's, it's almost useless. Okay. <laughs> all right. Just give me a compliment. No, I, I did date a girl once that said, like, yeah, I hate flowers because they die. Yeah. I was like, well, I guess you fucking hate people, too. No, that's that's not a, the same thing. Hate puppies? But that that's uh-huh. a really inconsiderate gift, though. If I just gave you a dog, now you have to take care of it and you have to move your whole life and schedule around? Like, what type of gift is that? You're a fucking I, lunatic? I, I definitely know people have been gifted puppies. It's a weird gift. Yeah, that's kind if of If you know someone who wants a dog, maybe, but... Flowers are a little less maintenance than a dog, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's still an inconsiderate gift. And I'm into plants. I have a lot of plants, so, you know, I'll take it. I'll really? Yeah. What's your favorite? My favorite, um, my favorite flower is an amaryllis flower, but um, I got a lot of succulents in the house. <laughs> this is great. Oh, this is great. Thank you. This Thank is you. Great. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of succulents in the house. That great. Is crazy. I really do. <laughs> Pop's head would explode right now. This is great. Oh, what? and, and now honestly, my second favorite plant is a snake plant. So. I'm gonna enjoy this episode. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. What's going on in here? No. I got kids, B. Yeah, I, got, I, got kids. <laughs> I got kids, B. No. Man. <laughs> oh. It was already bad that you had a favorite flower, which is mad random. <laughs> Nobody has no, a I, favorite I got a lot flower. Of plants, man. Uh-oh. Nobody has a favorite flower. Like how hydrangeas and shit like that, right? <laughs> Come on, man. I don't. I wouldn't even know what those look like. You're just saying words to me right now. I'm going to get you a plant. <laughs> no, nah, I'm good. I'm going to get you a succulent. That, yeah! <laughs> please don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> Are you Mr. Flower Fantastic? Is that you? <laughs> Yo, Omar is so complicated because he'll sit and have a whole conversation with you about going to the gun range and then so on and so forth. Then he'll talk to bro. you about flowers. and I'm like, bro, what the fuck? And this is all in the same human being. He's the most versatile, dynamic yeah, yeah, human being yeah. I've ever met in my I life. I love plants, and I just got another 100 rounds for my shotgun yeah. <laughs> through the mail. It's crazy. Yeah. So. You just this nigga has lived order every order life. Just order yeah, ammo. Yo, it's wild. We live in a strange world where you can order ammo. There's not a room yeah. that he can go in That's, and not fit in. Yeah, that <laughs> is actually alarming. Yeah, <laughs> right from Florida. <laughs> so there you go. I wonder if anybody just like gets ammo and no gun and just like throws them at people. <laughs> nah, that's I don't think it's gonna perfect. be effective. That'd be mad funny if I just walked up to you and just do mad bullets at you. Mm. Yo, bullets are expensive. People should resell them shit, so, to be honest, but I don't think it's legal. But. Like I have what? this like list in my head of like people that I'm gonna recruit, like should society fall apart? Amar is definitely on the list. I can grow shit. Like the nigga farm. Shoot shit. Yeah. They can know how to I'm ready. shoot shit. I'm ready for the zombie apocalypse. Yeah. Bradley, I, I'd take Bradley if Mr. World was ending. He'd be helpful. <laughs> you and, and Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, our boy Marcus. The nasty Marcus? Yes. He can build anything. He's good with technology, anything. Oh, wow. I thought Marcus because like, he's just immune to every disease. <laughs> he is. Like, that he too. Been he's just been exposed to everything. Nah, he, he is. So, but, but what does Brad do? Not like in a bad way. I was like, I know you fight fires. What does no, Brad do? But we could just avoid those. He look, he can drive any car. He okay. can fix cars, all right? Yeah. Uh he's good with carpentry. He can build stuff and all kinds of stuff like that in the house. All right, that's fine. Uh Sandy. safety wise, he knows how to uh take fires out, fucking <laughs> uh, CPR, he had to do all that stuff, like mm-hmm. a mini medic, all that. Mm-hmm. Bradley's helpful. All right, I keep Bradley cool. around. That's so cool. I mean without Cameras and electricity, I guess Derek is just useless. Oh, yeah, Derek's useless. <laughs> Derek's just absolutely useless. He's a, Derek, he's a liability. That <laughs> Derek can document up until his battery dies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's over. First thing Derek's going to ask is where the food. Yeah. I thought he was like, yeah, what, what are we going to eat, though? <laughs> and then he comes with a dog, too. Then he's going to want to take his dog with him. Yeah. No, dogs are helpful, but we could just take the dog and leave him. <laughs> his dog's not helpful. Oh, then never mind. Derek, is your dog, you know your dog's not helpful. Nah, nah not yeah. at all. His dog is a reflection of him. <laughs> <laughs> his dog is exactly like him, actually. Um, how was Thanksgiving? Uh, spent, I guess, mostly 
try to avoid family. It's nice because you see them, but like that wears. You spend a off. lot of time trying to avoid family. Nah, no, I don't. I work a lot, <laughs> but seen? like my larger, like extended family is just yeah. I mean, I try to avoid people. So you're not gonna tell them about the time you faked COVID? I didn't fake COVID. <laughs> <laughs> you're a bastard. <laughs> Yeah, best. I never for time COVID. alone. They're gonna when you guys say <laughs> when you guys say shit on the show, people actually believe it, and they're gonna be like, "Word, you fake COVID." I didn't fake COVID, but that being said, I do prefer to spend time by myself a lot of the time because I just get more work done. You called me. You was like, "Yeah, you, you anyway." You gave me a negative test. No, nah, I, I, but why would you? Why would I think you had access to that? You're a bastard. <laughs> How's your Thanksgiving? Uh, Thanksgiving was cool. Uh, went by some aunt's house. Um, so last night, because I guess there has to be a, a period of like, it's over. I know you don't do leftovers at all. I'm not a big leftover person. All right. I'm not a leftover person, period. It's so disgusting. So Brandon, he's not here today, Alpha Memphis. Mm-hmm. He made uh, lobster mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. It was fire the first day. Yeah. Right? So now, two, three days later at this point, and I taste it, I'm like, I heat up on you. This don't taste right anymore. Are you even supposed to eat food three days later? Yeah, definitely. You do three days. Does later. it? Does it? When does it go bad? It's in the, a in long the time. It takes a long time for food to go bad. And no, day. it it doesn't actually. It doesn't you take can eat long food a at week all. later. No, if food if, if it's left out after no. two hours automatically is no in the fridge in the fridge. Yeah. fridge. You don't just leave refrigerated. It out. No, I know that, but refrigerated. I think it's only good for like maybe maybe three days max. No, it's like a week. Yeah, you, can you guys and are eating it, week old no, no. food. And if you have it in a container tight sealed thing, you're good. You're you good. guys are eating week old food. Reg, when you go to the store, there's stuff in the packages that's probably been in the store for like a week. uncooked food. You're yes. talking about, but that's uncooked food. That's worse than cooked food. Uncooked food, hermetically sealed, is like different than something that you cook that was out and exposed to whatever elements. If they butchered a cow and then sealed it and it's not even out that long like just legally i don't think they're able to have raw meat out that long you know, you, legally they know how to do a lot but they do it <laughs> That's Yo, a fact. i went to pick up some medication once mm-hmm. and the whole shelf was expired the whole shelf medication <laughs> but where were you buying this medication it was like walgreens or something like that it was walgreens cvs one of them but the whole shelf was expired and not even like recently like oh it just expired like last month or this week it expired like a year or two. I don't know. Ago. I have mad faith in Walgreens. I don't think they'll do that. <laughs> it was bad. It's I bad. have mad faith in them as an organization and a company. Like, I don't think they'll do it. But just to circle back to lobster mac and cheese. So, and I was like, why does it taste this way? And I remembered I stored it. I put everything in one container. I had that. I had salmon on top of it and something else. Oh, uh, it's taking on the flavor of everything. Yeah, so yeah. it kind of fucked it up. My bad, Alpha Memphis. That shit was fine. He can actually cook on the low. Yeah. I don't know that about him. But three days so yeah i mean i would get the next day or even later in the same day i don't even but. know how because like i'd eat two week old food before i ate that pizza the blaze pizza that was really <laughs> bad what are you talking about the first pizza? of all you're the one who say you don't eat cheese and then you told me you was like no 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 they have <laughs> vegan cheese it's great it's i had vegan it. cheese you told me you had it no nah, that was, was definitely a lie I never had it. I was trying to expedite <laughs> the ordering of the pizza because I didn't want to stay there all day. That was a lie. I was just like, hurry up and buy the shit. But yeah, I, I've never tried that. Why would I buy vegan? Like, just logistically, why would I be eating that vegan anything? It's not actually cheese, by definition. Yeah. Funny, the only day I eat cheese out the year is Thanksgiving. Mac and, and cheese. Mac and yeah. cheese. Yeah. yeah, mac and cheese. Okay. Yeah, only day. No, nah, thanks- mm. Thanksgiving was great. It's my favorite holiday, honestly. So really? I really, yeah, Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. It's one of the few holidays that I really participate in. Me being Muslim, it has no religious ties. It's, it's truly an American holiday, much like July 4th is, mm-hmm. which I don't celebrate. Um, and I think we all know why. But uh, Why do you celebrate July 4th? But I, I mean, I you, don't. Don't, you don't celebrate July 4th, but you celebrate Thanksgiving. But they, they kind of have they both the same historically, origins. Yeah, they both historically are yeah. fucked up. Um, but Thanksgiving is about a coming together. July 4th, I don't know. <laughs> What that shit is about. It doesn't really bring people together like Thanksgiving does. And so really for me, it's just it, family. It actually does bring people together. It's same the, as the Thanksgiving. Same. Yeah, it's, it's not the same. It's all it's breaking like, bread together. A little bit different. July 4th is more like friends, family, 
like yeah. everybody like you just have like your outside hanging out fireworks celebration yeah. of the nation i Party with that stuff thanksgiving everybody yeah. knows like yo you're, you're it's family it's very family family oriented yeah like mm. Y'all cooking and eating yeah. Everybody's bringing something mm. and It's I, a little different then. Yeah And I have a large family And so I, I had probably about 20 people at my house yeah. um, It was quite a few of us And I house ho- hopped So um, I really enjoyed my Thanksgiving Good food Good times yeah. Yeah, Black people don't celebrate Thanksgiving uh, For like the history Or anything like that We celebrate yeah. Thanksgiving Just because it's us getting together <laughs> And yeah. the food and stuff like that Yeah, so, yeah We don't get fucked No I, I get that yeah, we can't. saying the origins are Yeah it's wild fucked up they try, they're trying to give us Juneteenth now, which we always had, but it's not cool anymore. Yeah, because everybody gets off. Yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, and I, eat, and I eat leftovers until the food are, is gone. I don't waste anything. That is disgusting. So three, four, five days, it doesn't matter. See, somebody could say waste, wasting food is disgusting. See, yeah, I don't waste food like, at all. No, but, no, like how, right? but, like, food, oh, leftovers? but food like, poisoning, food poisoning is not, a concern. We're proof that you're not going to get poisoned after two days, three days. Yeah, you'll be good. You'll be fine. I'm all right. My, my cutoff is usually the Monday. But if you I cook an appropriate Saturday, amount, you don't get and leftovers. Then, and then yeah, that's yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. I have turkey in the fridge right now. I'm going to eat the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you cook the appropriate the amount of food, you don't really have to deal with leftovers. That and is then, one thing. Oh, but God, that's not what Thanksgiving is about. Nobody cooks the appropriate okay. amount of food. Okay, wait, wait. wait. I'll tell you this. The follow-up is, once you've, you've finished cooking the appropriate amount of food, even if you have something left over, you could always make to-go plates and then give them out to the homeless. What's the last or, thing you cooked, Reg? Uh, I, I can't recall. Uh-oh. I can't recall. All, right. All right. So how, would um, you, how do you cook the appropriate amount of food? I, I don't know. There's serving <laughs> sizes. I, I, I don't know. But you could give the food away to homeless people. You'd rather have too much than not enough. But you know that's the one thing about Thanksgiving that I'm not crazy about is the gluttony. I think we do over overdo oh, it, yes. and then people but, some people do waste, and that that people that just fill me. their plate up, eat like three bites, and just have a plate full of food that they throw out. Like you could give that food away to the homeless. There's there's yeah. a million ways for you to repurpose that. Yeah, I'm gonna eat everything. <laughs> okay, I'll be having turkey sandwiches <laughs> later. <laughs> I mean that that would be a really nice way to celebrate Thanksgiving. You you eat and all of a sudden you're thankful, and then like and there are people who food. aren't as fortunate fortunate as you and your family that you could go and give food out to. Yeah. But niggas are you know lazy and they don't want to get up and pack plates to give out to the homeless. Yeah, but true. they will get up and go to the mall to save like fifty dollars on a TV. So you know what I mean. So you need your TV. Money on the TV. No, of course I would say money on the TV. Oh. <laughs> like, what are we talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about? Oh, uh, just because we're on the topic of family. A frisbee the food <laughs> on my way to buy the TV. <laughs> Throw that shit out the window. Uh, to, the, to the guy I asked you for a dollar, the same homeless man. Yeah, I'll give him food, but I won't give him cash. That's fucked up. I mean, I, I've given homeless people food, all right? And I've also, like, if I haven't had cash and they, like, buy a place that has food or whatever, I've gone in with them and, like, bought them food. Yeah, I've done that before, and they've thrown out the food. Like, there was one time I went to a chicken shack, and then homeless dude came in, and I was like, yo, just add whatever he wants to my order. And he said thanks, and then he left. And then when I walked out, the food was right there on the floor. He obviously didn't want the food. I violated once. So I was at this restaurant, and the dish was, like, way too spicy. Right? And I was like, ah, I'm not going to finish all this. I'm not going to eat it. And I gave it to a homeless person. <laughs> no, no water, no beverage, nothing to drink. Just spicy ass food. Yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I got like a block. I was like, damn, <laughs> he's going to be tight. Yeah. That's going to hurt coming out. That's he's going to be tight. No, I actually, disgusting. I had a strange interaction with a homeless person recently. Now that y'all brought that up. I was walking out of Best Buy and I found a pack of cigarettes on the ground. Like the box was literally unopened. So it must have just somebody just dropped it. Cigarettes are expensive as shit, right? Mm-hmm. I don't smoke. But I grabbed the box and as I'm leaving uh the parking lot, I saw a homeless guy and instead of money, I was like, yo, you wanna want a cigarette? And opened the box and he was like, Nah, what if you put Fenty in it? I was like, Oh shit. All right, I'm keep the damn cigarettes. But I, was, I thought that was interesting that he cared that much that he didn't want me trying to drug him. I don't or know. Or he took that. one look at you and was like, "This looks like a guy who would put <laughs> like a serial killer cigarette. Like I'm running around this with looks fentanyl like a guy cigarettes. Who put to hand out. Cigarettes. Was it summer? No, it was just like like last week. Oh, yeah. it was, was real say, recent. 
Maybe he saw the nipple piercing through the shirt. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, ah, can't trust him. Yeah. He's putting Fenty in the cigarettes. It's crazy. Can't trust him. But I, I end up just tossing the cigarettes. I mean, I ain't got no use for them. I wouldn't have picked them up off the floor. I don't really pick stuff up off the floor. I don't know. It was a pack of cigarettes. I was like, I'll give it to somebody who smokes. I don't I've been with you and seen you pick a nickel up. I've never done that. Like, you're making oh, no, all this blaze. stuff. I would, never, up. I would never pick a nickel up off the floor. I don't, I don't know if I would even pick a dollar up off the floor. I which, would definitely pick money. Nah, I'm paranoid. Paranoid? I'm paranoid. About what? Because there's like mad shows where people will put money on the floor that they've done fucked up shit to. Like you'll pick up the dollar and it's like dog shit under it or some shit like that. Plus, like, I mean, I, I don't, know what shows you I don't do a lot of walking. For real? I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not picking it up off the floor. Whatever you say. Rich like Kanye. It's not rich. It's just <laughs> standards. Just base <laughs> living standards. Um, did you get a chance to see Kanye's uh, little social media video he did about getting his family back? Yeah. I saw it too. It made me feel bad for him. Nah, Kim got to stop playing, man. Because we, let's be real. Kim doesn't really want to be with Pete Davidson. How do we know that? Right? Here's, here's my logic. Okay. Let's let's before we shit on Pete Davidson, like let's look at this nigga's track record. He's a sniper. Oh yes. This he nigga is. has a, a, a crazy track record. Yeah, he's he is. a sniper. All right? But here's Kate Beckinsale. I know. Ariana Grande, like the niggas been out here shooting. And none of them look like Kim Kardashian, if you know what I mean. Got a point there too. Right? It's, it's still it's still fire. He's climbing the ladder though. He's yeah, working he's, his way up. Yeah, it's it's all fire. He's at the top of the food chain now. So here's the thing. She knows. If she dates Pete Davidson or gets seen with Pete Davidson, it's okay. Kanye will still take her back. Of right? course. If you've seen. Now, if she was seen with another rapper, a certain basketball players, let me play, it'd be hard for Kanye to take her back then. So she knows Pete Davidson is like... He's safe? He's safe. I can get away with this. Or the flip is after dealing with someone who some would consider like super rigid, doesn't have a sense of humor or whatever. She's trying to date the complete opposite of what she's used to. So she's going from one end of the spectrum to the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Why do you think Kanye doesn't have a sense of humor? No, but like you have to look at just from where he was coming from the last couple of months. Like I doubt she was doing a lot of laughing. Like, I mean, From and I'm, this is the outside looking in. I don't know their personal business, yeah. but you remember the time that they they came out with the sidebar. It must suck being famous and just having your personal shit out here for people to really break down. Trash. And, but I mean, it is what it is. We have a show. So there was that video where they caught her in the restaurant line where she was crying in the car with him or some shit. And like you know, she was like it completely a against him, shit, right? Didn't it come yeah, a it completely against him running for president. They were having issues, and then he apparently went to the middle of nowhere and was shitting on her and her family and her mom. And like I'm sure those were all strenuous. I'm sure they times. were times. And this is a PR family. That's mad. He is a he is a garbage fire in terms of <laughs> PR PR shit. And they have to deal with this constant, like, craziness. And then when she decides to back away, and he's now like, oh, shit, she might move on. Now, all of a sudden, yeah, I made some mistakes. Yeah. Let's be real. We've all here have dated women. And I'm sure there's not one person who hasn't made a woman cry. Yeah. Whether it's adverting or inadvertently. Yeah, but I've I've never, like, publicly shit on her mother. And Well, I mean, you also didn't have the platform to do that but, no, but even if i had the platform to, you've I, I gone wouldn't. to friends and be like yo my mother's a piece of shit nah, nah i've never done that i've never done that. you've never done that nah you liked every every woman you dated her mom was cool i've there are only a handful of women that i've been close enough to to even realize or figure out whether their mom was cool or not and if i have issues with their mother i probably already discussed it with her and or her mother amal I've definitely disliked women's families. Not just relegating it to just moms. Brad? I missed it all. Sorry. God. <laughs> I was looking up. And this is the audio guy supposed to be listening. I know. No, I, I, everything sounds perfect. <laughs> yeah. I was. <laughs> you, have you disliked any girl's mothers that you've dated? Not dislike, but 
one I was very annoyed by. Yeah. I didn't Same have thing. to I didn't <laughs> have to I didn't I didn't have to deal with her much, but I was very like it was very annoying. I'll be the one to tell the truth. I fucking disliked close to hated two of them. Damn. Like mm -hmm. to the yeah, point I I've I told we, I I've told two think. mothers they said something to me and I was like I would never marry your daughter. What? I swear in everything I love, I told them that. This guy's roofing. So this was before or after they annoyed you? Who, the mom? Oh, this is after. Like, they, it was like a thing. It wasn't like the first time I met them. Uh, mm -hmm. But over time, I was like, oh, I really don't like this yeah. person. And I was real. And they said something about, oh, you plan on marrying my daughter, this and that. And I was like, I don't ever plan on marrying your daughter. Jeez. Because of the mom? Kept it real. Or because of the daughter? Combination, but the mom was just like, okay, oh, you know, I've never been in a place because I automatically assume that any girl I I'm involved with, I'm never like your friends are my friends or your family's my family or whatever. Like those are your people. Their job is to look out for you. Even if we get close, if mm -hmm. anything were to happen between us, they're picking your side. Like it's innate that they're not going to fuck with me at some point if things don't work out or whatever. So I'm not building a relationship with the mindset of, oh, you're on my side or you, you know what I mean? You're going to pick me over this person or whatever the fuck. It's not about being on sides or anything like that. It's supposed to be like when two people come together, it's a unison. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah especially, especially actually, via marriage. Yeah, but maybe they looked for. at you and said, you're, you're a toxic person and I don't like you with my daughter because you're a piece of shit. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Because it takes one to know one. So if I'm a piece of shit, you definitely a piece of shit too. Yeah, that's a cop out. <laughs> it takes one to know one. No, like people could just clearly see Hey, you're a piece of shit. This, that's like Amar and the homeless guy. Like, Amar's not homeless to recognize this other guy was homeless. Like, just wanted to give him a cigarette. Man. My thing with Kanye. It's weird that you picked up the cigarettes, though. So. Yeah, it was just a, it was a, a box there. I was like, let me give it to somebody. And then you didn't give him the whole box. You offered him one cigarette. Just what was your plan with the other cigarettes? Oh, just give him, I was just going to hand them out to mad homeless people who wanted cigarettes. I was going to hand out yeah, a lot of Yeah, mad time on your hands, man. I just come across him a lot. But my thing with um, Kanye and Kim, for, for starters, it's so strange. It must be so difficult to be celebrities. You would mention it, to be a celebrity and then try to have a normal relationship. There's no normalcy. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care if it was Pete Davis or somebody else. I think that Kanye would be still willing to get back with Kim. I mean, she has a sex tape out there. I don't think that there's a limit to what could end their relationship. Like, end it, end it. If, if Kim started dating Drake, it'd be over. That would yeah. be, that's the one That'd thing. Be a, that's the one thing. Be but that's a betrayal, though. That's not even like a who you're dating. That's a I you're betraying. It's, it's all a betrayal. It's a betrayal. It's, it's just not weird really. to be married. She she filed for divorce. Obviously, she was gonna move on at some point. It's weird to be married and then just to be able to go on your phone and then see your wife with someone else. But yeah. and vice versa because he was out dating a couple of models. Prior but to that this. was all rumors. Like when you're again when you're a celebrity. Anyone you're seen with automatically is like you're dating them. It's and, like Hope said, I was just fucking them girls. I was gonna get, get right, right back. back. Yeah. <laughs> um, but nah, in his little video, he kind of said that he was out there dating a little bit, though. Yeah. I mean, but it's just weird living their lives like that. I just think that we can't even fathom it. There's just no normalcy to it, and so what that what they do, it it don't have to make sense to us. It'll always only make sense to them. I think about that with Will and Jada all the time, like. I can't fathom their relationship because it's just not normal. I mean, so, I, I know niggas who are broke who are poly. Like, that doesn't really... <laughs> this is way more than poly. Like, Yo, I don't know them niggas. I know Kanye. <laughs> like, my fault. Being broke and poly? Yeah. That's tough. Yo. <laughs> yeah. How is that possible? Yeah. Yo, <laughs> nothing, nothing? Hmm? If you're broke and poly, you got your priorities all fucked up. Nah, it's, <laughs> people are broke and poly. All I mean, fucked up. I don't know. There, there are many people that I Wait look up, at. So it's, if, it's subjective. Poly with no I place to stay? At, they just go from house to house? <laughs> no, they, they... Well, broke is subjective. They, they have places to live. What I live in the places that they live is, is questionable, but... <laughs> I mean, they have places where they rest their heads and they sleep and so on and so forth. They can't. They that's not the Reg Mansion, though. No, it's, I don't have a mansion, but I'm just saying. <laughs> like, you're, just, oh, no, no. you're a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to be monogamous? Is that based on your earning potential? Like, if you can't make over forty thousand, is that like all men under forty thousand should be monogamous? Yeah, Yo, you you don't remember that hashtag a while back? Broke niggas don't deserve pussy. I mean, I will Jeez. say if if you're not making a certain amount, you shouldn't be dated. And you're just running around. You should not be dating fucking. at all? Like, no, I'm not saying you shouldn't date because I feel like a woman can help with your earning potential. If you're locked in with one woman, 
and you're focused, that, that can help your earning potential. But if you're just running around sleeping with people, I'm like, there are better uses of your time. And I'm big on you get your whatever your money's worth. So if you're making $10,000 a year, let's say, you gonna have a ten thousand dollar a year joint. I, I, I just disagree know what with that, that. Is I disagree I'd with be that. Be okay with that. Yo, there are broke dudes who's dealing with women who are making like six figures. Yes, right. And those broke dudes dealing with the six figure woman. When the man with a million walks in, or the man that makes six or more walks in, it's a different conversation. Not some really. Women are, Tiger some Woods women is every waitress on the East Coast. It, it's different. It's a billionaire. When, it's different when it's guys to. Women. Some women when it's, prefer. When it's the women making more money, and then some women it. prefer her men, their men like like the women that date dudes in prison because they know where they're at. Some women prefer <laughs> to deal with a man that they kind of have control and power over. <laughs> yeah, right. And they and they can feel that way. But if it's the guy with ten thousand, and then it's like, oh, this guy makes eighty five ninety, and I make mm. two fifty, then probably the eighty five ninety guy got a chance still. Possibly, but like that's that eighty five ninety guy. That's a different dynamic. If I make more than you, you're not telling me where to go. Like you're not, you know what I mean. Some women like the idea of being able to be in control. Same thing with men. Some guys couldn't deal with a woman who didn't need them. I agree, right? I agree. But that that lasts for a certain period of time. And there's a limit to that. We all know that. Like you can you can enjoy uh, having control and like the guy not telling you what to do, this and that. Mm-hmm. But when Christmas comes around. And you get in a pair of she socks. Can her, she can buy her own right? shit. And you get in a pair of socks. And all your other friends are getting bags or whatever they get. Or vacations. No matter what, but you're going to feel away inside. If she makes six figures, she can just buy her own shit. Or give him the money to go buy her the shit. I, bro, I'm telling you, you I've, I've seen feel, it. How I've long do they last? This is the real question. It's a I, thing. I have a fairly amount of t- like they I mean, date. I know people who, who are it's with not a, people that... All right, could you date a woman who, who made substantially more than you? Yeah. I can. Keeping it in context, uh, Kim makes substantially more than Pete. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't seem to bother her, I But guess. She's, not, she's not dating. Well, it's first starting, and she's not dating him for his money. Obviously, she's straight. After you make a certain amount of money, there's nothing you really... You're not really dating a guy for money because there's nothing you can't buy yourself. Like, financially... You're straight. Like now, you're looking for other qualities. Yes. If if it was strictly about money, Ye's a billionaire. Like she would have stayed. Two times over. Yeah. I'm telling you, she just wants to torture Kanye for whatever he did. Whatever. This is just a torture thing. I agree with that. Um, I mean, and Pete is cool, right? But when you get to the billionaire parties and stuff like that, he's not. He's not that cool. He's not no there. More. Yeah, he's not there. It's, it is what it is. I so think. how should Kanye feel? Should he be trying to run up on Pete? I don't think Kanye built like, built like that. I don't think. Nah, Kanye took a lot of Chicago. gang shit on the low. Yeah, nah, he be yeah. with the hood. I don't. I don't <laughs> he think took a lot of gang answer. shit. Maybe, I think you're in a world before, now but where not anymore. He was he was on what you call talking about GDs on. You could do that course. if Pete moved like that, but he doesn't. So you just look like an idiot. But my I I think so, remember he's gospel music all of that. How's he gonna look running down on him? It, Kanye has never had a problem contradicting himself. So uh, I, you're right. Um, That's a fact. I think, believe it or not, I actually think he's going about it the right way. So he's giving Kim what she wants. That public shame, and you, because you embarrassed me publicly when you uh, were pro MAGA, ran for Trump, or the, ran for president. Mm. So he's he's giving her that, like, okay. I'm oh, he's a, he, okay. He's gonna just step back and allow himself to be a bit embarrassed. Right. Okay. Do that for a little bit. After that fall back. And then when she sees like, oh, it stopped. And she has that fear that he's going to leave now. And then she'll come back. Mastermind here. That's too much. Those games that they playing, it's too much. It is. It is too much. But you're assuming they're playing a game. You're assuming that they're playing a game. It's all a game. It could be very serious. I don't know, my nigga. Every... If it is, you got to run down on Pete. I'll be honest. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. I'd probably run down on Pete, but you're in a space, too, where financially... But if you run down on Pete and Pete Davidson beat Kanye ass, it's a (laughs) wrap. Nah, Kanye's not getting beat up. As men, who are we supposed to be mad at? Like, who should Kanye be... Should he even be mad at Pete? Because Pete don't owe him shit. Is Pete his friend? Does he know Pete? I don't know their relationship before that. But, no. But just because... 
of them all at a table together. Yeah, yeah. That was after Saturday Night Live, though. That was after SNL. They was. They was but like, that, yeah, can't, that doesn't mean anything. When you're in those celebrity circles, like you just be around niggas. Yeah. All and, right. And then pops words. He can't whip Kim out, so somebody got to take them. Yeah, he got to go call up a cousin or something. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. Call up his auntie. Um, yeah, I just I don't even know if he should even be mad at Pete because if it's me, I'm gonna talk to Kim. Like I I'm mean, not, to yeah. be honest, you. I mean, it's America. You'd be mad at whoever the fuck you want to be mad at. But oh, you can. at the same time, you should just be upset at yourself. You're responsible for so all of this shit. And and Kim. Gotta be a little mad at your wife, though. In your instance. Well, she actually Who are you mad at? Me? Well, first of all, that all that is blasphemous. <laughs> like, that's not happening. Was it Dos so. Effects or was it the girl? I mean... <laughs> I mean First of all, all right, let's rewind. All right, let's rewind. First of all, let's let's preface this by saying, I heard Miles from Alicia was there too. Mad niggas get cheated on, right? Mad niggas get cheated on a lot. They do. And I guess, unfortunately for me, me being in college, this is a space where, like, you know, when we're experimenting, or she did whatever she did, right? At this point in my life now, I don't think any of that is happening. And if it did, to that extent, like, obviously it's the girl's fault. <laughs> no, nah, I was, was a burp. You're a madman. Um, <laughs> honestly, if, if it's my fault, at some point I have to, like, sort of deal with my responsibility in it. But again, like I said, I can be mad at whoever the fuck I want. Yeah, I'm going to be pissed at him in the immediate sense. But he's doing what guys do. Guys are going to try to fuck. Like, that's what they do. I mean, yeah, I'd probably be mad at her. So, y'all want to hear my theory on cheating? Yes. So, it fascinating. Depends on, it depends on who they cheat with, if I'm mad. I'll be honest, right? Now, if you cheat with the guy who made $10,000 and missing the tooth, You're I'm highly, You're pissed. highly <laughs> upset. Yeah. I'm enraged. Yeah. Why? <laughs> right? But now, let's be real. If Michael B. Jordan clipped my girl, you got to eat that. Like, I mean, you don't have to stay with her, but chalk that up to the game. Chalk well, that up to the wait, game. You gotta chalk that up to you, the game. What are you eating? You gotta eat what? The Pride. hell? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you was on cleanup duty. <laughs> Yikes. Nah, I was nah, like, nah, immediately nah. after he clips, I gotta go eat that. <laughs> Yikes. Nah, that's you. you nah. <laughs> she stayed with you in your bed. Nah. That's different. <laughs> now, if Michael B gets your chick, then. You gotta. Ain't nothing you can do about that. Certain. certain People, you got to take that. No, I'm not taking. L. I'm not taking the L. You got to take the L. Bro, he is, he is a human being. Even if it's, I don't get. Elon Musk, Bezos, Diddy, like there's certain people you just got to be like. Yeah, you got to. Yeah. But if you, it's, you can understand, if it's the dude that in between spots and jobs. <laughs> nah, I feel like. Nah, son, you really hate me to do that. You nah, hate I mean, me. Or. And I mean, now I hate you, and now it's war. Or it's the swim. <laughs> I'm, about say, I'm about to say that might be why you're really mad. Yo, hit a pause for yourself, please. Nah. Because uh, <laughs> I mean that might be it. That might be where the hatred comes from. Because this nigga obviously has nothing to offer. Yo, but how do you even get to the swim point? Huh? How do you even get because to the point? Because like you, like you outlined, he has nothing else to offer. So how so does he got deal with offers? Big D yeah. Express. <laughs> 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 so if she clipping him, then she's getting something out of it. Yo, that's why I didn't even moving. get to that point. Like, what's the conversation beforehand? He's like, yo, I, I get you a four for four, some dick. Like, <laughs> what? Big nah, dick. I mean, if she got a good job, she's not really looking for him to do anything financially. She's just nah, looking for attention. Not- you got a good like job. Anybody, I, rather, I don't care who you are. Anybody. I'd rather can. somebody at the job who has a good job Any, with you. <laughs> anybody could catch the fate. I don't care if you're Elon Musk or whoever. Like, I'm, if you got I'm a figure it up. She need to swim. <laughs> <laughs> pay for blood. Big nah, D Express. If a woman cheated on you, she pay? <laughs> yeah. Y'all won't pay see me no more. Yeah, you're devastated. <laughs> what? You have to be a monk somewhere. You have to go live in a, a Tibetan, like, monastery for a year. Like, yo, you was that trash that she paid somebody yeah. else, like. Yeah. And she bought a horsepower for him. <laughs> 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 that is crazy. Man. So if you get cheated on, do you blame the girl or the guy? Always the girl. I blame both. Yes. Why you blame both? Always what the girl if, for what me. What if she doesn't even know 
He doesn't know you even exist. It doesn't matter. Like I said, it's America. Like what? I can't swing on her, so I reserve the the right I, to be I upset at whoever the fuck I want. At all. What if I never met the guy? What if she cheats with a guy you know? That's, that's the only nah, that's, time. That's the only. That's that is automatic. Like I that's have personal. to fight you, but like I don't all the way have hatred for you. It's just an innate thing. But if I know nah, you, nah, like nah, that is quick. like. But then the guy he doesn't yeah. know he's. He's mad at him. To kill him. No, I said it's the opposite. The guy I don't know, is, there's no hatred there. It's just automatic. It's, it's a just reaction. reaction. Gotcha. But if there's like somebody that I know, like I'm looking for you Murder at that Death point. Kill. Like that's <laughs> that is crazy. I'm, I'm never mad at the guy. I'm gonna be honest with you. In any case, even somebody, a guy you know, unless and, unless it's personal, unless they know me. But other than that, no, nah, I'm never mad at the guy. That's as personal as you could get. If they know me, yeah, 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 yeah. that's that's terrible. But if I don't know the guy, I can't be mad at you. I probably would do the same thing. It's directly related to like a tax bracket to me. It's like a tax bracket. I've heard him say this before. This is the truth. What do you mean? He's nuts. Like, pause. I am mad at at her if she's like, if she's fucking somebody that's like the ten thousand that makes ten thousand dollars a year and missing some teeth or something like that. I'm mad. <laughs> like I said, but if it's <laughs> Drake, LeBron, that's a business investment. I get what you're doing, shorty. Yeah, I can't be mad at that. I can't be mad at that. From a logi- you have a financial no, mind. From a logistical don't go, don't standpoint. Don't go that far. Let's say it's a dude who makes just makes more than you. Uh-huh. Are you all right? Are you going to be like, all right, it's still a business? Like, if, if someone makes 80000 he makes 90000 no, you're no, no, like... No, like, significantly more. Yeah. But not like a, a famous person. Okay. Not she everything is money, dentist. though. Let's say he makes like 100000 Yeah, if she starts clipping her than, dentist or something. Yeah, I and mean, she goes, babe. He was giving me. Here's the extra. thing, though. I want to have a full relationship with him. Next. <laughs> Go have the full relationship with the guy who has more money. I feel better. Don't just cheat and come back. But you got <laughs> Big D Express. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you not everything, money. not everything in that in that instance is sexual. Because nine times out of ten, I feel like if a woman's cheating, it's to sort of compensate for something she's not getting. Because you know what, you know it is a trash feeling. So again, if she's cheating with the dude who has no money and no teeth, then <laughs> what she's compensating for is. I just you know, need to know how you even got to that part of the conversation. Because when, uh, when you walked by, he said, "Yo, ma," and you turned around and you saw him. You said, "Yeah, I should pursue this conversation." <laughs> nah, he probably he probably said some <laughs> slick <they> shit. <laughs> and sent her a DM. They clearly weren't in the same room. They weren't in What's the same that place. That sound right? <laughs> we getting phone calls. <laughs> oh, you just banged yeah, yeah. on a voicemail. <laughs> Sometimes they, they call mm. voicemail, but that's my thing. Like, if how did you get even get to that point? Nothing. Nah, you know it's trash though. When you break up with a girl, mm-hmm. and then her next guy is like mad subpar, and you just be like, "Damn, the, 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 she like view me in that bracket." You're like, or again, why am I like if you date? I should, I'm not even attainable if you <laughs> mess with. Him. You're thinking about the wrong shit, bro. <laughs> I mean, he already gave you the answer, so you're just willingly just no, no. ignoring it. It's fine. It's fine. But that we don't, for we her don't rebound, know the answer. She just to that. looking, nah, for a rebound, she's not looking for gifts or whatever. She just wants to get clipped and we, just get. That's fine, but we don't shit. know the answer to that. Like, how did you even get to the conversation or the point? A DM. Of that. A DM. He they just, can talk mad shit. He and just the DM more, And the thing that's more heartbreaking is she probably had to go through like two or three bodies to get to that nigga. Crazy part. A motherfucker just DMing swims, like just. Yo, here. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> hey, that's women, how you start the conversation, most women, bro? Most women aren't even, like, looking around because they don't want to add bodies. So she's probably revisiting a body she already had already. That is a lie. Bro, she's, looking- re- she's revisiting a body she already had, or she's searching for a body, which means she's going through so, two or three other niggas to get I'll tell you, that's the age thing. That. If you find a woman 32 and younger, mm-hmm. I'm going to fuck about adding a body. 32 and older, they're nah, like, oh. they, they do care. It's a, it's a generation thing, I feel like. Nah, b- bruh, they, they do it's care. It's a whole younger sexual revolution You feel like, on. listen, there's probably a nigga that you see her with that you feel like is a new nigga that's been there the whole time. Oh, yeah, definitely, because I've been that nigga. Yeah, the dude she's had a 30-year relationship with, and, and he's the in-between nigga. He's, he's been there for, like, three boyfriends. Yes, but my thing. And every time you get a phone call, you know somebody fucked up. But as the in-between nigga, right? Mm -hmm. That's okay. It's in-between. But like the the serious long-term relationship. Because the in-between guy, never seen. Never seen the in-between guy. 
So you're okay with it as long as you don't see it? I wouldn't know about it. What you don't know don't hurt you. Right. But now the serious one, I'm on vacation with, I'm posted here, holidays with. I would know. If that if that, if that that man know. is subpar, I feel hurt. I would know. Wait up. Do you? I'm petty. I'm when when the relationship is over, do you still follow your ex? Do you still kind of... Like what is what's your process or your procedure after? Because I don't I wouldn't know most of the time. So, I probably wouldn't know. I would definitely know. I feel like if I go through the process of finding you and unfollowing you, especially if I do it first, right? That shows a level of care, right? So I won't do that. You're way too too strategic with this. I'll I'll ignore you. I'll mute it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You play too many games, my nigga. I do a bunch of shit and whatever. And like if they unfollow me, cool. It's easy, but. Yeah. You play too many games, bro. Like, I would know. Because, like, if you deal with someone long enough, you know their habits. If all of a sudden she's not posting shit or she's posting something in a different place or she's wearing a certain dress, That's I'm like, different. oh, no. you on it. Following and stalking is very different. I had a, I had a. Ex. That means that's in your search history. Like you type the name into search and see what's going on. I had to go look. I, yeah, I had a, a ex that she went out. Like, I remember after we broke up, I remember seeing a picture of her out. And she she dressed really conservatively when we were together. And then as soon as we broke up, like, titties to out, I'm like, oh, she's she about to get clipped. Like, I was heartbroken. I was like, it's, it's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to happen. And especially if you guys break up, like, right before around her birthday, somebody's somebody's going to clip. Birthday is is yeah. an automatic. Someone's about to get Any, that. Anytime, if you don't get a phone call on her birthday, she's, she's fucking somebody else. Anytime there's a reason to celebrate, mm-hmm. And after breakup, like whether it's a holiday or something like yeah, that, she's off with the heads. Fucking, she's she's fucking. She's Do fucking. you guys have any rules or ground rules for social media usage when in a relationship? Like, not really. For me, don't moving disrespect forward, me, but that's pretty much it. For me, moving forward, don't follow me. I won't follow you. That's that's how I'm approaching. Really? Yeah, that's how I'm approaching future relationships. No, I agree with that, but I'm just saying outside of that, don't disrespect me and make me look crazy. I will know. I'm not following you. So I, I would still know. My my thing with social media is the same thing that kind of extended to like actual mm-hmm. life. Don't tell me to do anything or any, that you're not doing for yourself. You know what I mean? So if you're telling me don't like those certain pics or like why are you following oh, this person, okay. don't tell me that if you're not following the same rules. I get that. And that goes with anything in life. You know what I mean? Okay. Because I can live with any like mm-hmm. what it is, you know? I don't like making rules for people, but at the same time, just don't make me look crazy. Yeah, I feel you, but what's what's crazy to you or makes you look crazy is different to every person. That's true. You know what I mean? Because somebody could post a picture with their friend that they've been with, that they've known since pre-K or whatever, like, yo, with my bro or some shit like that. You might be like, yo, you make me look crazy. Who the fuck is you with this guy, you know? Somebody if, else is, if people is know that. you're dealing with me or they see me with you or whatever and you're doing like extra shit or thirst trapping or looking crazy online, it's a reflection of me. Because now, nine times out of ten, if I see a girl bugged out, and I know someone she's with, I look at him crazy. I don't even look at her crazy. I'm like, oh, my man is, you got to So you said no thirst trapping either. Your significant can't like wear like a bikini beach shot? That's not thirst trapping. What's thirst trapping? Thirst trapping is when you go out of your way to get that attention or whatever. What do you, what do you think the bikini picture is for? So no, if, pay you're the at the, if you're at the it's beach. Camouflage, don't know what's here. No, if you're at the beach and, and sometimes they just feel like they look nice or whatever it is, that's cool. Now, if you're at the beach and now you got like you got mad titty meat out and you're wearing the bikini that's like almost nothing there, you're thirst trapping. It's a very big difference between wearing a bikini if you're wearing like some crazy flaw shit that's barely there or some shit like that. Or if what if she's wearing that and hands you the phone like, "Yo, take a picture of me." You taking that, that picture? That doesn't matter. This is, niggas are simp's. Like, there's mad niggas that do that shit. I know. Dudes, so I'm saying, so would you? I'm take sure there's niggas pic- out there who are recording their girls for their right. OnlyFans videos. Oh, oh yeah. That doesn't mean oh, nothing. Yeah. Facts. That doesn't mean nothing to me. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Don't have me look crazy. That's it. I mean, like, if if she's taking a bikini pic though, Rich, and posting it, it's for attention, right? And here's, what, here's my view. Posting why, any picture it's for at the base level is for yes. a level of attention. Here's why I'm okay with it. Because I, I feel like when I date women, that they're attractive enough that, yes, guys are going to try to speak to them and talk to them regardless, right? Whatever they post, a guy's going to try to talk to them. A thirst Wet trap is a... Of course. Doesn't matter. Doesn't a matter. Doesn't matter. Trap, but Same a thirst thing. trap is an invitation, is yep. what I'm saying. It's a very big difference. Here's what I'll tell you. Social media itself is one big invitation. 
right? Of course, but there even, are levels to it. Even me as a guy, mm-hmm. I know I post certain pictures, I post this, I'm going to get a response. Right? Facts. It's true, and, and we do it, we get the response. So it is what it is. So, you, I, like, the attention thing, you know, it just has to be like, what happens after the attention comes? How receptive are you to it? How far do you, you know? But that's when it gets tricky. If you're posting the thirst trap, to some degree, you're, you're receptive to it because you're inviting it. Have you ever gotten in trouble for giving attention to another woman on social media? Or not in trouble, but like... I've, I've like had that. someone make comments about me liking a certain someone's pictures. So it was just likes. It was just likes, but it was consistent likes because she was like, you've liked every single picture. I've gotten that, that too. Uh, go ahead. Um, um, I've never gotten in trouble because I like everybody's picture. I don't right. know if y'all see my, the way I like, I like every woman's picture that I come across. That like, was my defense. I was like, I like, if, I like you're, my, if you're my timeline, I know you and I like you, you know, I like it. So, yeah. Um, it was one of those situations like, oh, you liked every picture, this and that. And it gets to a picture of a woman in a thumb bikini. I went back to the camera, and she was like, "It was flame emojis in the comments from me." Oh, you're wild. <laughs> just like, yeah, you can't get around. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but to my in my defense, at the time I didn't realize I was wilding until it pointed out, and I was like, That's "Yeah, out of pocket." You kind of that, that was, out, that was you know? a bit much. Yeah, but that I'm was just like I'm not leaving comments. At that point, the comments are a little thirsty. The battle is lost. It's like, yeah, you did that. Yeah. All right, my fault. At that point, that's what you can say, my fault. Yeah. You can't defend that one no more. But, I don't know. Like I said, moving forward for me, I won't follow you. You don't follow me. That's just what it is. Yeah. I mean. I'm getting off of your social media. I don't care what you post. That, that's a fact. I really don't. Don't. It don't matter. Because not for nothing, it's usually the girls that, that aren't posting. That's the one that's in some shit. Yeah. Plus, men out here will sexualize anything. That's why I don't even know what a thirst trap is. A woman could post just a, a body con dress and dudes will be... You're looking at them. <laughs> ...up on it. Like, you know what a thirst trap is, bro. Everything's a thirst trap. There was a, there was a girl I know. There was... Um, some woman posted a video of like her doing like a, a throat thing. Like She stuck her tongue out and she was doing like Stop that flex doing that. thing Stop doing with it. her throat. <laughs> Stop doing what? that. You don't have to do the hand motion with it, My right? bad. She was doing a flex thing with throat. <laughs> my like, my bad. <laughs> don't have a right, throat thing with the she hand motion. But, but you know what I mean. She, she was doing the flex thing with her throat. So I don't know what that is. <laughs> what is the flex thing with her throat? I she was making her throat. her throat, like, expand and contract. She opened her mouth and stuck her tongue out, and you could see the back of her throat, and it was oh, opening okay. and closing. Okay. okay. So then, there was in that same video, she basically used Did the she clip have a of the girl. No, she didn't have a bug. <laughs> But Booger Girl could definitely do that. Um, <laughs> you still following the, in the that? Next, in the next video, <laughs> the, the girl in the next slide, she was doing the same thing, doing the expanding and contracting. And I'm like, who are you doing that for? You know what that's for. Exactly. It was like, you're clearly basically putting up a sign saying, hey, like, look what... What I'm capable of, or that's a thirst trap. You're you're trying to get. Yeah, those are the obvious trap. ones. I'm talking about the more passive Basically. thirst traps because again, yeah, but that's that's the extreme example. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? Yeah. If if a, if a woman looks good and she posts it, then dudes are on it. Yeah. It doesn't matter course. what she's uh, wearing. A hundred and ten percent. That's why I just don't follow. Just you know what? Mm-hmm. But the the shit that actually makes you feel like you have a chance is when she's posting like overtly sexual shit, where you're like, oh, maybe she's she's with it. I'm not DMing anybody, but. I hear you. Uh, at what point do you stop checking your ex's page? When it feels obsessive, when it feels like it's detrimental to like whatever, and you're just like, you have to really ask yourself, do I have anything positive planned for this person? If the answer is no, just leave her alone. Just cut her off. And just stop. Yeah. I know it's foreign <laughs> to you because you're a fucking bastard. You're like positive. <laughs> I'm like, what's positive? No, positive like... <laughs> After a certain point, right, you got to think to yourself, okay, you've had your fun. Am I going to, is my intention bettering this person's life? Do I want to be with her? Do I want to marry her? Do I want to give her all the things that she wants out of life? And if the answer is no, wanting to continue to fuck someone isn't a good basis of a relationship. And it's kind of selfish if Uh, they want more out of the relationship. I'm like, I genuinely wish well for everyone, but there's certain (laughs) women I'm not like, do I want to marry you? Do I want to? I don't. You're kind of a sociopath, a little bit. Those don't go through my mind. 
A little bit. It's like, you're like an alien who's about. trying to figure out human emotions. A little bit. <laughs> That's kind of fair, I guess. Jesus. <laughs> It's selfish because when we're younger, it's not a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. But when you hit like your late twenties, your early thirties, people want thing. to settle down, and after a certain point, you're just kind of wasting her time. Yes, that that's when you get into like taking advantage of people. Yeah, like that. I don't take advantage of people. Yeah, that I don't do. Uh, did anybody? I I know you guys aren't caught up with insecure, but just because we're on the, uh, I think I'm caught up and Instagram thing. So it's because I, Issa went back and looked at. Uh, Lawrence's page. Oh, that, that must have been a new one. I didn't see that one. That's right. the most recent episode. That's the most yeah. recent one. Uh, that was the one after the the Lawrence episode? No, there's one in between. That. After the Lawrence episode... Uh, Molly. That was Issa and Nathan. Issa and Nathan's episode was after Lawrence's episode. The one where Molly's mom got sick? No, yeah. that was that was another episode, too. Because Issa, Issa and Nathan episode was the one where you had the earthquakes and them two kind of came back together. Right. And then... Oh, yeah. Then Molly's mom, mom was in the hospital. Then Molly's mom was in the That was the last one I saw. All right. And now since Poppins in here, we can all talk about how we watch Insecure. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's great show. Case. It's a great show, by the way. It's, a, it's pretty... Well, like, the best episode was the, the Lawrence episode. I'm going to give you my... It was. I'm going to give you my hot... Nah, Issa's a, a black woman who's a creative. Like, of course we're going to go support that. Issa? Shout out to her. Issa and Molly are going to end up together in the end. Absolutely not. That's my hot take. Because you have a fucking lesbian fan. You're a Absolutely sick not. motherfucker. Why not Issa and, and Nathan? So. I feel like Issa is going to get back with Lawrence. I feel like that's too easy of a cop out for the show. But they keep circling each other. But that's, that's what happens in life. Yeah, that's I know. Life. That's what I'm saying. You keep circling the same person until like it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where you end up. Nah, you keep back circling with until somebody gets out of the circle and another person in the circle heartbroken and shattered. True. Um, but I think they're going to end up together just because how their interactions are with men, how they always kind of have like a wall and they always kind of go cold on the guys, mm. but they always go back to each other anytime that happens. Because they're friends. And then <laughs> they are friends, but there's a ep there's one episode when they had on like... This is actually same, making me like really concerned about your friendship. The same pajama set. Yes. Right? One had the top to it and one had the bottom to it. And they routinely, lay in the, they routinely lay in the bed together too. Yeah. Girls do that all the time. Share the same pajama set? Yeah. They may, girls they may cuddle, give you... Girls see each other naked all the time. Yes. Right? But that's very different than sharing a pajama. There's something super intimate about sharing the same pajama set. You can give somebody, like, you need pajamas here at bars. They, they traded clothes. Girls do that. Trading shit. clothes? Yes. But here, there's one set of pajamas. Right, yes. <laughs> and we're in my house, so there's probably other set of pajamas. Bitches do silly shit, and I have like the top, the and I have the bottom. And <laughs> they'll spoon each other, and girls do shit like that all the I'm time. You, I feel like they're gonna and end up together. No, and there's no, you're. And then, and then Molly's haircut, it just says that they're gonna end up together. Wow, that I feel like that's gonna offend yeah, somebody. Crazy. That's offensive to somebody. <laughs> you're crazy. That's offensive to I, somebody. I, think they're gonna I don't both, know who, but somebody. I think at the end of the day, they'll both be single. I do think that they. I don't think they're gonna end up with any. I guy. feel like they're gonna end up with with somebody. I think Molly. And I think Lawrence is gonna end up with Condola. Yep. Yeah. I think nah. Lawrence is definitely ended up with condolences. Yeah. Definitely. Nah, I don't think so. I'm tell that that was a horror episode. The one where like yeah. they're struggling with the nah. baby. Nah, Condola's a a bitch. Yo, uh, I can't. I don't think so. Nah, she's. I didn't love her character. I don't. I don't really like. I think there's there's a a sort of setup they had there where like they. It was very subtle, but there were red flags all over her. You know what I mean? Because you got to look at it like we were fucking around, right? We had a short-term relationship. It didn't really go anywhere. You got pregnant. I don't know what was going on with the whole protection situation, but you got pregnant and you sprung that <laughs> Probably on Probably wasn't any. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got pregnant and you sprung that on me, right? Nine times out of ten, like, guys might think the woman's, because it's your body, it's kind of your responsibility to kind of handle the protection thing or whatever. But wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? It's the woman's responsibility to handle the protection? I'm just saying in terms of if you don't want to get pregnant, you it's him? your wait. Just let him go. If if <laughs> go. if you don't want to get pregnant, I'm talking about if you get to the point in your relationship where you're no longer using condoms, which is the point where the man has control, you can't force a pill down her throat. Right. So in terms of whether or not she's on the shot or the patch or the birth control pill, that's pretty much her responsibility because you can't make her take that. 
Right, and it's our responsibility to have the condom on to not. But I'm get saying to if that. your relationship has transitioned to the point where you're not using condoms anymore, that's and, how I preface that. And when it transitions to that point and that happens, you, you're taking responsibility for whatever happens from there. Okay, bet. So he did do that. You called and said I'm pregnant out of nowhere. I'm assuming because if you ask a girl, yo, are you on protection by the way or whatever, you clearly don't want to have a child, and she's telling you she is on protection. Well, you still we got don't know if he asked effect. her that. Well, we well let me also right. say this. It's never out of nowhere because you had to skeet in her in order for her I to get pregnant. I understand. That's so it's such not a, a weird surprise. word. It, Fucking like it is. early 2000s, man. It can't Listen. be a surprise for a man if she's pregnant. It's not like, how did this happen? Do I understand that. <laughs> you had to do something. I'm sure all of us have had pregnancy scares. It's not like we wanted to have kids. It was like, I've had conversations with girls where I'm like, oh, are you? do you have protection? Do you need to... <laughs> I've never had one to the point where I started to question. I was like, maybe I should go get my, my sperm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, You've shit. never had a pregnancy scare? Not like a legit pregnancy. It's, my pregnancy scare has been like, oh, I'm a few days late and not be pregnant at all. Oh, it's okay. Like... I may be shooting blanks. It make wow. a lot of sense at this point. Okay. You won't know till you're really trying. Uh, but um, all right. <laughs> okay. I don't even know how to address that. <laughs> but <laughs> the truth. She basically, she basically said that. Uh, she called him up and said, hey, I'm pregnant. He was already moved on or whatever. You decided to keep the baby. He decided to, like, okay, you're keeping the baby. I'm going to step up and do what I got to do to so whatever. But my life is already on this trajectory where I can't really shut this job down. Or I was already doing all this stuff. You got to so now. So now I'm flying back and forth trying to do what I can reasonably, within reason, to be there. And you expect me to be there, but you're excluding me all at the same time. Okay. You're letting your family shit on me. You're making decisions without me. You criticize me when I'm not there, but you don't really give me the opportunity to really engage. What do you want from this person? So there is no within reason when it comes to a child. Nothing's within reason. Everything is within reason. No, it's like, oh, yeah, this job was my plan, this and that. I'm trying to be there for this child. Mm -hmm. Mom's making it hard because I'm not there. I'm in San Francisco, whatever. You got to do what you got to do, and that job don't matter. He was flying back and forth, so that right. job does matter because you still need that job to take care of your financial responsibilities in terms of right. but him financially not, taking him care of Him not having that job doesn't stop him from getting another job. It's the truth. Okay, right? but that was that's the best possible job for him to have, to basically take care of his responsibilities no, no, the best, and take care of The himself. best possible job for him to have at that point is to be a father. And be it. That's the honest, okay. That's All, what it is. Okay, I mean, that, he could have immediately right? started that's to the, apply for other jobs. That's the sitcom full house answer. But at the same time, you you need money to raise a child. Yeah, he, and it becomes he could expensive. apply for other jobs, though. He could apply yeah. for other jobs. 110%, but that's the job he wanted, and he decided that he was going to make it work by flying back and forth. What would have made it be easier is if you have a partner or a person that's willing to co-parent and understands, okay, you're working this job. How do we somehow meet in the middle? Right. They, so they're both wrong because they're both fighting for what they want and and that's right. what i think they both had some they both mission. literally flying back and they're forth they're both he's still wrong they're both wrong right because it's not what you want it's, you want the job she wants somebody to have more time with so she has she's not with the baby 24 7 whatever they're both wrong neither but what, she what, wouldn't let him take the baby what she wants or what he wants doesn't even matter anymore I understand, but it's she wouldn't let him take the was baby. Was that best for the child? It's best for the child. Of course. Right? She wouldn't let him take the baby, so that's not completely accurate. Yes. But there's, there was also, they also showed him sometimes when he was working late and this and that, he called and he was like, y'all can't make it this weekend. Yeah. Right? That's so, reasonable. That you said that's reasonable? Yeah. Life happens. Life to is both the baby. To both of them. Uh, that's the life uh, that happened. Of course, but I'm just saying that that sounds good. But speaking as someone who has dealt with it, like, life happens sometimes. So you have to basically make a call. And it's not always the best call, but, like, like hindsight is twenty twenty. It's easy after the fact to be like, okay, that wasn't the best decision. But when you're sitting there, you feel like you can do everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. But they're both wrong. They're, yeah. Like, she's wrong for being I'm spiteful. sure B didn't purposely like destroy the podcast single-handedly. Right. But hindsight. Right. If he could go back, I'm sure he would get vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> but in their case, they have the baby's hair now. What do they want, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, she she's being spiteful or whatever it is because she feels like she's taking on so much of the burden of yeah. having this child. But she chose that. But it's two people that I understand, but she, and realistically, she's the one who made the decision. I, I so what, also, did he, what did he choose when he came in? A 
Oh, again, a you just time. said like, we can't. <laughs> we're we're just guessing because we didn't see the scene and we don't know whether or not he huh? this was sporadic you don't or think he's he the chose the. She, I didn't she, say he's not the she father. She took the I'm turkey saying, based end. <laughs> no, I'm saying. There are times where you assume this person's on birth control. You could have asked her if she's on birth control, or you could have had a conversation where well, we're like, do you want kids or whatever? She said no. I, I don't think those hypotheticals are applicable here. There are women they who had a kid. just get pregnant and unilaterally decide, okay, this is what we're doing. Yes. Could be. Right? So, but the guy takes responsibility because the guy, they can't get pregnant without you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, no, you of I mean? uh, 110%. And he stepped up and, and he said, okay, and, I'm going to be he here. Did so. step up, up. But he did step up. But I am saying, okay, if you were dealing with a girl, and she said, hey, you got to a point where you guys agreed that you're not using condoms anymore because I'm sure there are points in every relationship where you stop using protection because you trust each other and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. And you believe that she's on birth control. Then at that point, you've, well, you've taken the responsibility in terms of trusting that person to, well, to take the birth control. You can't make her take the pill. What I'll say is that hypothetical right. really isn't applicable in this situation. In this situation, she got pregnant and he said, OK. She said, I'm going to have this. And he said, okay. And he's, yeah. and he's continued to Bet. try to be there. So we can advance past that part of the conversation. But what I will say is this. I think they both are culpable in, yeah. in certain ways. But I also think one thing that the episode tried to show but maybe doesn't do it, uh, the greatest job of, the uh, one part of or insight that we just may not get as men, is that there's a lot of emotions and a lot of other things going, in, going on. And so when she's not wanting to give the baby or when she's feeling the type of way, she may be suffering from postpartum. Mm-hmm. You know, she may be really going through and dealing with things that with him not being there, he just doesn't even know. And this being his first child, he really has not no idea what she may be feeling because she just had a child. And so, you know, there's parts of it that are somewhat nuanced that uh, we just can't catch always when, when just watching a show. And so that's why I don't hold her completely responsible for their bad interactions. I think they're just both culpable for, for some stuff. But she's clearly going through a lot. She's probably dealing with postpartum. Um, she's handling the baby solely on her own. He isn't there, really. Maybe on weekends and some of those he missed. So it's a lot of emotions and a lot of things going on. Okay. And, and spoiler so, alert, because I know you guys haven't watched the latest episode. Go. But he moves back. Of course he does. Okay, yeah. He moves back. Ooh, I knew that was the responsibility. Yeah. You know but that's funny? it. Her sister. I, I know it's. I just saw a clip. I'm not up to date with yeah. the show, but I saw it like that, like half of that episode where kid is born and flying back. I'm like, yeah. this nigga's gonna move back. I've got <laughs> to. Of course. I'm like, cause yeah. I, I I didn't figure. I'm like, wait, so what's going on? I'm like, he's on a flight. I'm like, oh, he has a job somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. And he has to fly back and. Fly. But he's flying to L. A. to San Francisco. Though. That's not a crazy fuck, flight. Fuck, yeah. bro. A yeah. Flight. Yeah. Hours? I'm like, this nigga's gonna move You got back. to. Like, yeah, that's a half hour I'm flight. Like, the stress at, at the he moment. had, like, that whole time, like, he's going to move back because it's the level of stress, like, he was putting himself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But once he moves back and the flight isn't an issue anymore, because, like, Loki, there are little things that, like, one, her sister being disrespectful. There's little things that she should have nipped in the bud that's, like, that erodes the relationship. So you can't really shit on someone for not being there and then take every opportunity to discourage them from being there. Right. But again, that was some of my fault, Darnell. That was some of the, the parts of the episode that we just can't, it's all hypothetical and we just don't know because they literally go one year later. Right. So you skipped the whole 40 weeks of pregnancy. We don't know why he wasn't around the sister and the mother. The mother was literally, literally When the child happy. was born, immediately when the child was born, the sister was talking shit in the hospital. But also, but the mother was actually happy to see him. And so there Wait, was something okay. there that Go. why he didn't get to see the family because the sister wasn't so happy but the mother was like damn I've been trying to see you yeah. and I was wondering like, immediately well, why didn't you a, see they weren't in a relationship wait Correct. um damn I lost my and she wasn't telling him about the hospital visit she was just doing shit oh we assume that that's the part him? we don't know no, we didn't they see actually the one talked later. about it they actually talked about it yeah they did name him without asking and yeah. they named the child and that was yeah, that was wrong because he walked in and he was like yeah. She, he Mustafa. Didn't, he didn't know Elijah any of Mustafa. this stuff because she called him and said, "Hey, I'm pregnant. I'm, ha- I'm having a baby." And, and he found then out via text. He alluded to the fact that like everything that was being done was being done without him. The hospital visits, all that, naming the child, like nobody included him in anything. The and, and her response the baptism, to that, all that shit. Her response to that kind of was, "Yeah, you didn't want to be involved. You said that, which we know at the end of the tail end of last season, he did say, "I don't really want to be involved in any of that," but. Even in that, I'm like, if you did want to be involved, it's kind of hard for somebody to completely block you out unless you are actively taking that stance. It's, it's actually, while she's pregnant, it's not hard to block somebody out. Once a child is born, you have legal um, ways legal and methods. Yeah. But like while she's pregnant, you can't, you don't really have power over shit. And then even after the baby is born, depending on the state you're in, there's very little control 
like the father has. Now, there are definitely guys who are deadbeats and so on and so I'm not talking about those situations. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, shout out to all the single moms doing what they have to do and so on and so forth. But at the same time, there are situations where like people aren't thinking about how conducive they are being to the the process of this person trying to. Facts. But that's the part of the episode that just sucked to me because we just don't know. Yeah, and, yeah. and they left us to guess at all of this. And you see what's gonna happen. Like you guys didn't see the latest episode, but basically he gets he's trying to make it work as a family now. Like good. You know? Good. But the scary part is that's reality for a lot of people. Yeah. They are with someone because they had a child with them and that's Yeah, I don't think they're gonna life. end up together. I mean I don't know, but they're gonna try and there's some people that try like that and they've been together twenty years unhappy. You know? I think they're wow. too I think they're too far apart. And then I remember like, you know, the episode you where he mentioned next, you should watch the latest episode. All right, but I'm gonna watch as soon as we leave <laughs> But when, when when he mentioned uh -huh. like I guess he alluded to the whole court thing and she flipped out and said, Get the fuck out, like mm -hmm. what what are you talking about? You're not giving me an option. I'm trying to work it out with you and you're not you're not well, really giving me That was me before he had to sit down and really think about his own actions because once he got a chance to sit down at the at very end of that episode he was right. he called her back and said yeah. you know what my but fault but where's the where's the montage of her actions though and that's these are some of the things we right. just miss yeah. why you hate women I don't hate women <laughs> you do you I genuinely don't do. hate women because in your mind you think Lawrence did nothing wrong no 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 I didn't say Lawrence didn't do anything wrong it's just first of all I have to Amar's gonna stand so hard for women like he's he so leans Love on the, the simp side of the spectrum. You're male chauvinist. I have to be the opposite. I'm You're not male chauvinist. chauvinist. You are. It's okay. I'm not male chauvinist. And then okay. two, the thing is, like we we basically go through situations where we're in a space where like guys are automatically demonized and we're not automatically there's no there's nothing to understand. If a woman stabs a man, it's like oh walk it off. You know what I mean? So where is nine times out of ten, like we have to play both sides of the spectrum and. The, the thing, like, no one's going to address what she did wrong. Nobody said that. No, we definitely addressed Like, it. even look at the, look at, if we're talking about Insecure, look at all the shit Issa did in season one. And look at the mental gymnastics women went through to justify the fuck shit that she <laughs> did that they would shit on men for doing. Right, and we all champion Lawrence in that. Yeah, we were yeah. team Lawrence. He, like, listen, when he clapped the, 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 the bank lady, like, I was... He was mad hype. I was hyped. Yeah, I was I definitely hyped. team Lawrence, but he, he did some fuck shit too, so, it, you know, Wait, there's still see, that. You see? That's what yeah. I'm talking about. My nigga was broke for like seven years. I don't Yo, know. That's not what happened. Okay. That is what? not what happened. That, that, that kind of is what happened. That is not what happened. He was broke right? for quite no, a while. So now, <laughs> no, no, so no. Issa basically said, if you go back to the first Hold season, on. Issa basically said, no, because we yeah. have to come back to that. This is yeah. great. Issa basically <laughs> said, Issa basically said, he supported me when I didn't have anything going. So she was returning the favor, right? And he had a startup that didn't work out, and we all understand because you're talking about all that mental you health. You relate shit to him a lot. I see what's going on here. I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Let's go. Nah, nah. You worked at Best Buy too. That's right. I did work at Best Buy. I knew all I did work sense. at Best Buy. It all makes sense Buy. now. I did work at Best Buy, <laughs> but he was he was an entrepreneur. His yeah. app didn't work out, and we know like statistically. <laughs> I no think you might be right. Statistically, statistically, statistically. And then Issa had a train ran on her. Entrepreneurs. And then Issa had the train ran on her. I knew it. It all makes sense. This is it. It all makes sense now. Fucking asshole. It all makes sense. But shout out to Pop. I wish. <laughs> but, but <laughs> entrepreneurs basically like they they suffer from depression and, and suicide <laughs> at 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 greater rates. That so he might have been going we, through something too. Now was. scientific now proof now <laughs> Molly and Issa had a conversation in season Real one. Life experience. Molly and Issa had a conversation in season one where Molly said, "Have you ever brought this up?" And Issa said, "No." Oh. Mm -hmm. As soon as Issa brought up the fact that she had an issue with it, the nigga went out. Got his act together, got a job, and then told her, you know what? I'm out of it. I'm with you. I'm going to do whatever it takes to fix this. And he went in that direction. So as soon as she pointed it out, he started to fix his mistakes. Right. right. And then she proceeded to go out and get clapped by, so, like, so on. If a woman I'm dating cheats with Best Buy Lawrence... I got an issue. You got a problem? <laughs> if she cheats with the glow San Francisco, <laughs> big, Silicon Valley, big, big Lord. Different. But she, she fell he in love with me. his potential. He got me. <laughs> I get it. Um, Derek, let's play some voicemails. Anyone. Buy it over there. What up? 
named Jason. Originally from New York, now North Carolina. I've got a mortgage now, so I'm trying to provide, take care of the family. Want to say thank you guys for coming up with this idea for this podcast. Mm-hmm. Yo, it's dope. Y'all make me laugh. Watch episode one. Watch every episode. Um, yo, the dichotomy of how y'all like to say the word bitch to describe females, and then Ma hits you up with the black queen. Right. And then a mob being so cool and Shout calm and queens. Um, secure in his sexuality with the jokes. Um, and at the same time, you know, Reg getting swammed out and role playing. Darnell expressed his movement. Swammed out and role playing. Like, what episode is he talking about? That never y'all happened. Dudes, y'all ill for that. Growing up in the hood, you're, you're kind of raised homophobic and you don't really realize that. You know what I mean? And so, you know, y'all stay saying pause, but it's also, like, dope to see black men, educated, smart, successful black men, also showing, like, yo, I'm secure with my, who I am, comfortable in my skin. Um, that's dope. I hope more teenagers and youngsters get to watch it, you know? Um, but also, just to add on to what y'all was talking about with that comedy comedian and uh, battle rap, I think, you know, with battle rap, you know, when you try to go and do music, you know, it took Lux some years, but Lux is nice on the, on, on the beat now. Um, you know, you get more money and more production into your craft with battle rap, moving into uh, being a rapper, and you could eventually be good. But being a comedian on social media, a lot of them are just goofy, not necessarily funny. That's good Don't but you go from high production on social media comedy to there's no production doing stand up. It's just you and your craft. And that's why it's a sweet science to be in a, a stand up comedian. Usually, stand up comedians that are good also are great actors because you got to be in your skin Kinda as far as secure with uh, your feelings, your emotions. Um, usually, some of the best comedians are most depressed and, and they express themselves. So I think that's why there's a difference and it's easy to do it. But, you know, go from battle rap to uh, recording artists as compared to, you know, social media and stand up. Both are difficult, but that one is a little bit um, of a smoother transition to some degree. Thanks again for what y'all do. Y'all dope. Love the show. And like I said, it's your boy Jay. And I ain't going to front. Y'all make me want to do a podcast. All right. All right, yeah. Oh. That's a long-ass message. got no patience. Yeah. That was a long-ass message. Oh. That, that, that nigga is one of those people that sends, like, them long-ass text messages like this, like, <laughs> boop. The big, like, it's crazy. Salute Doesn't make any Jay, sense. man. That was a great voicemail. Yeah. 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 Really appreciate Shout us out. Shout out to him. No, it was dope. But then everything after that is like, all right, come nah, on. Nah, and then... Pause is applicable to anything. Anything overtly sexual. sexual. Nobody here is like you know homophobic I mean? or hates gay people or any of that. My mom pauses me. The that's thing that's fun. crazy is like that's, that's real. People are gonna want to see what they like. I stop having a conversation. Like I, I have like people that I've worked with from like every background. People are gonna want to see what they want to see. People who wake up and want to be upset or right. outraged or find something to criticize are gonna find something to criticize. So we don't even comment on that. Nobody here hates anyone. Yeah, but I think he actually it's cool. like. Yeah. I mean, there could be yeah. somebody. There could be somebody on on the team who was, and you you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. You Cubians? I mean, you could probably guess. That's different. But you wouldn't. <laughs> you Cubians. Yeah, you Cubians is different. Shout out to you, uh, Jay. Thank you for the voice. The, the war on your Cubians is still on. Appreciate that. Which is ironic. Never mind. He did mention. <laughs> Isn't it ironic? It is. One, a, one thing I did. Ironic. One thing I did want to touch on because you've been fighting um, that battle on the inside. He mentioned the transition. <laughs> the transition from um. Uh, internet comedians to stand up to even acting and it made me think about the new Kevin Hart show that I know we uh, most of us have seen Reg you haven't seen it yet so we gotta come back around and touch on that but Kevin Hart obviously started that stand up and doing different types of comedy now moving more to dramatic acting is really killing it at least in a very new show he has so it's dope that you were able to say touch on that uninterrupted it's amazing <laughs> right the freedoms <laughs> my freedom uh, one more Derek play the one at the top Whoever the latest one was. Let's see. Yo, 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 fellas, what's going on? Pop, what's good? What's going on, fellas? It's Keith from Jersey. 
from North to Big Jack. Just want to call that to tell y'all niggas, man. I fuck with the pod, man. Nice. Y'all some funny guys. Pop, I've been following you for a while. You got to get the grand back, though, man. I know I keep saying hey, every so you talk about you ain't fucking with the grand no more. Let me tell you that. something, you all Yeah. Like, some, some of us niggas, man, we need to be in the hood, man. We need to douse our life with laughter, you heard? <laughs> That's, Sometimes that's we need to, we need a little giggle hand there. You heard Paul? <laughs> just saying. You know what I'm saying? Fuck with y'all niggas, man. Um, I do just want to say one thing, bro. I, 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 I want y'all to talk about some of these fits that these damn NBA players be wearing because it just be out of hand. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like a loose ball. You know what I'm saying? Paul. Yeah. Shit just be like Westbrook. With these baggy knee knickerbockers, he keep wearing like shit like that is getting a little too out of hand. So, um, <clears throat> I just want your opinion on: uh, Do you think the fashion world is getting a little too out of hand? Because to me, I- I'm gonna say yes. You know what I'm saying? Just let me know your thoughts. The shit getting the real, real, real crazy. You know what I'm saying? He had to kill on with the gym sweats under that, with the with the pants tucked in the sock. I, I ain't know what that was about, but he was losing me. He, he was definitely losing me with the fit. With the blue hair, like, bro, that be behind the uh, computer and shit. I ain't know what was going on there. You know? But definitely fuck with y'all, man. <clears throat> Let me know what y'all think. Bro, with the blue hair. Uh-huh. That is hilarious. I'm, I'm off white, by the way. <laughs> Shout out to uh, Virgil. Salute. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, I'll... I'll pass it on to you. Yeah, because I was going to say well, that. After, uh, okay, yeah. so. After, because you're the fashion guy. I, I love the fits of the NBA. I love how daring and how bold they are. Um, <laughs> have y'all seen Kyle Kuzma recently? With the oversized sweater? With it's, that yeah, pink a, sweater? Yeah, with the oversized sweater. Oh, it's amazing. Man. He's like 6'8". To wear a sweater that large is crazy. Um, now, nah, I love the fits. I love how bold it is. I love how, much like the last caller, he was saying that guys are just unafraid and una- unashamed to be exactly who they are. That's what the NBA players are doing. They got a lot of money. They could do that. So I fuck with all of them. But you know what I mean? Shout out to him and the caller and from North. So fuck with it. I'll tell you, I feel the opposite way. I feel like that's not really who any of these wow, you know, really? of guys are. I feel like... They have money, and the whole thing now is to be outlandish. So they all want to be outlandish, but by yeah. being outlandish, they all part of it. Yeah, they yeah. all become uniform almost yeah. in a way. And I think they, you know? they start hanging out with other crowds of people. They like what's regular or what's ordinary. They start to become out of touch with. So yeah. and I don't think I don't think they they necessarily a lot of them aren't knowledgeable about fashion or anything like that. It's I have money, right? I have a stylist who'll do like some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, you know what I, I mean. Do some wild stuff. Yeah, and I want to yeah. get me something that's not normal, and I have a lot of money. That's what it looks. Yeah, it's, like. It's a competition off the court and on the court. Right. For that's sure. what it looks like. And there's certain people that are into fashion and certain stuff like that. Um, Chris Paul, for example, I'm not a huge Chris, but you can tell very he, fashionable guy. Right, but he's yeah. into a, the fashion that fits him that he knows about. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, Whereas Kuz, it's like I just got tr- some stuff because this is different and this is. Well, a lot of them are just following trends now. Right, it could be, but you know what's funny about Kuz is. is his girlfriend is actually uh, a, a supermodel, or a model, not a very anymore. famous model. They did diff- recently. Yeah, he went to. He had to go to Washington. She's like, "Yeah, you're not a lady. Yeah. <laughs> it's quiet. You're not, it's not lit." <laughs> um, but that's, so that's why I she think he made it, it's, it's trendy. Yeah, it's quiet. It is following. trendy, like, but he he made what's no the name? Chris Paul doesn't follow trends. He follows like what's for him. What's for him. Right. And it seems like the other guys are like, yo, that's the trend? We're going with it. Right. Like, the wide bottom pants and all that. That's a trend right now. Should but I kill Chris Alexander, whatever? Yeah, he's... he's. Woo. But he... He kind of knows. He knows his stuff, though. He knows his stuff. Yeah, you know has, what I mean? He has relationships with designers. He actually has. He be at, uh, at the Tom Ford show wearing right. all Tom Ford. He he moves around around fashion. PJ Tucker has. PJ Tucker. He's a no. sneakerhead, big sneakerhead. Yeah. Westbrook, like mm. he's knowledgeable about it. But then Westbrook's yeah. very knowledgeable. But he, then there's he people put, like Coos. Yeah. Just, I'm gonna throw some shit on. Yeah. 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 Hard and also you catch them at a lot of the fashion shows. You catch them niggas at all the fashion shows, which I think is is a relatively new thing, but they're. The NBA players now, like I guess, are more worldly. They're experimenting with shits that they they haven't done before. You got um, what's his name that just did Dancing with the Stars. Iman won. won. Shout out to Iman won. won. Killed it. But you know, this isn't a new thing, and that's why I think people are missing. NBA players have always been the fashionable guys. If you go look at Wilt, yeah, if you go look at older players, they always had the furs. They always have been the most fashionable of all uh, athletes. So this is not really new. Um, It just looks 
strange, I guess, to people who don't know about modern fashion or contemporary yeah. fashion. I mean, ninety percent of them niggas was wearing like fucking suits off the Steve Harvey collection, the super long. <laughs> that's what was but, like. That's that what was in. Button. That's what was. Popular. That was yeah. what was popular. That's whenever they buttons. the way they going with when these they wide the, leg pants. They, they gonna try to say, oh, you yeah. got to wear a long leg I'm definitely suits. wearing. It's not happening. No, no, I'm definitely wearing a kilt on one episode. So, oh you know, wow, we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I gotta when wait they, for pop. Pause. <laughs> That's crazy. When they, Jesus. I'm gonna, I might just, have to just make switch sure, seats that day. Make sure you wear drawers. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, you're gonna hit pop with the fatal instant. <laughs> <laughs> definitely coming with a kilt. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga crossing his legs. So the wide leg suits and everything like that. That's I can't do it. Force the dress code on them. I think. Well, I, that was only a short period of time. Iverson yeah. actually like is what made them institute the dress code. Yeah. yeah. Remember, David Stern instituted it because of Allen Iverson, and, and they just didn't like the what he was bringing to it and, and his brand. Iverson got one of my favorite quotes of all time. Put a murderer in a suit, he's still a murderer. Yeah. Don't matter what you dress That's like. That's a fact. Uh, one last voicemail, Derek. Brick City, too. <laughs> Shout out to him. Yo, this is B. Smith from uh, South Carolina again, calling in. I just want to hear y'all craziest holiday stories, man. So my craziest story was Thanksgiving. Uh, we getting ready for Thanksgiving, about to eat, waiting for my brother to come and wait for him. Come to find out, we get a call, we get a phone call from like county jail down in Georgia somewhere. He got jammed up, and it was like, dang, like right, right before we were about to eat, we were waiting on him, man. We we're supposed to get at like 3 p.m. We ain't eating until like 6 p.m. waiting on him. Got the call. Pops had to bail him out. It was a Friday. It was a Thursday, so he couldn't get bailed out until Monday. So that's that's crazy, man. I, I never lived. I always talk shit to him about that, but you know it is what it is, man. What's y'all craziest stories, bro? All right. All right. So Thanksgiving one year, big family, everybody's over. Uh, one of my aunts goes to open the door. She opens the door. She goes, "Who are the Chinese on Thanksgiving?" It was my cousin's new boyfriend. Damn. Who happened to be Asian. Damn. And it was so funny. <laughs> the she delivery guy? She left him standing outside the door. Oh, and he's holding wow. a bag because he came with something. Mm. So it looks like he's... Wild racist. It was wild. <laughs> nah. She said... What? Well, nobody... Nah. Nobody knew. All right? Nobody... This is our first time ever meeting him. We didn't know him. Um, and you found the racism hilarious. No. <laughs> It's Thanksgiving. You, you found an assault on his humanity, like a, a joyous thing. <laughs> no, no, no. It, it, it was funny. Fuck yeah. I don't, I don't think it was funny. It was man. funny. I don't think he laughed. It, he didn't laugh. No, no. He no didn't I don't think it was funny to him at all. But the circumstance, like, it was a, an honest, innocent mistake. Eh. <laughs> she's mad because she's like, any Asian dude holding uh, a bag is a delivery boy? Somebody order Chinese? That's crazy. That rings the door that we don't know. But I'm sure she said her boyfriend was coming at some point. Yeah, they didn't know if she didn't she, say. She didn't mention that he, he was, was Asian? Asian. She never mentioned he was Asian, wow. right? Which she doesn't have to, right? My boy. And I don't remember her mentioning her boyfriend is coming. Okay. It was just like a random person kind of showed up. Mm -hmm. So that's probably mm -hmm. the funniest or like weird. He's a really cool guy. Though. They're not together anymore. But yeah, <laughs> okay. I would imagine yeah. that. No, they were together for years after. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. He was cool. What's your story, Rich? My the crazy holiday. All my holidays go according to plan. I don't have any oh. crazy holiday stories. I got a flat once, and I had the car towed, and the tire replaced. It wasn't New I Year's Eve when the train happened. <laughs> no, that the only that train running on New Year's Eve. That none of that ever happened. None of that ever happened. None of that ever happened. Oh. Um, most of my holidays have gone according to plan. Right. No one was arrested, and uh, no one was offended by horrible racism. So. Family's whack. Amor? No, I've had some uh, holidays where, where near fights break out. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? I, I think that's regular black people stuff, though. And some of my, sometimes my family will gamble on holidays. Yeah. We break the cards out. And you, you get money and alcohol, and it could, get, it could get rough. So, I mean, that's just near fights is the worst. I told y'all when my uncle almost robbed Derek, but I don't think that was a holiday. No. <laughs> he, just did, he just do it. Oh, he did rob him. No, he did yeah. rob him. Yeah, he robbed Derek. Yeah. He gave his stuff back, yeah. though, so it don't count. That that being said, like, I do try to avoid people as, like, It's funny. He pulled his knife out on Thanksgiving, too. It's like a regular thing. Oh. It's like Pop, then. He pulled it. <laughs> he, is like he, pulled it. he pulled his knife out on me at your birthday party. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's what he does. Oh. Uh, because I told him his price was too low. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but since Pop isn't here, I'll take over for Word of the Day this week mm. and dedicate this one to Pop. Malady. Malady. 
You Haitian, you know what that means? How you spell that one? M A L A D Y. It's like it's a sickness it, or some shit, right? It means to be sick with disease or something like that. A disease or ailment. No. Malady. Is, no. What's the synonym for malitish? Yeah. Or some shit like that. I say my <laughs> word of the day would be vaccination. <laughs> <laughs> How do you spell that, right? I don't know, man. I just avoid Dead. spelling things now. V-A-X. I avoid right? spelling things now. <laughs> V-A-X-X. I, V-A-X. I, I, I just avoid spelling things now. <laughs> I, I'm traumatized. But you said vax is wax. <laughs> <laughs> Vaccination treatment with a vaccine to produce immunity against a disease or inoculation. So when you have a malady, you should, should probably get a vaccination. You should yeah. get a vaccination. And the irony of this is, and B is my boy, but we'll had, we've had these heated debates about the vaccination. Mad times. On camera, and we have it's just like, oh, yeah, it's like, you know, they, they out to get you, my man. Like, you should, like, well, somebody got you, my <laughs> friend. And then... You got pop. Well, to pop and oh. B get well soon, both of them recover yeah. from COVID. What do, yeah. What's um, that saying? The Jamaican saying, "Who doesn't Who doesn't hear can feel." That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. That's um, a good one. But and that also reminds me, I need to go do my yearly doctor visit. Like I'm kind of late for it. Um, how are you guys with doctor visits? What, what doctor visit? When's the When's the last time you've been to the doctor? Because right? I didn't watch the rest of that skit. When's the last time? Visit. When's the last time you've been to? The I go to the doctor all the time. All right, so you're up to date with your stuff. At, what, what what stuff? Like be specific, because no, oh, I don't know. Your routine checkups. Yeah. Okay. Amal. Yeah, I routinely go to the doctor. All right. Absolutely. Yeah. What 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 are you talking about though? No, I just routinely oh. go to the doctor. Get checked up. Um. So, what's the weirdest situation you've ever had at the doctor? I don't get no weird situations at the doctor. But okay. weird is subjective because he might be into. That, yeah, that is true. No, nah, I don't have no weird situation. So, nah. <laughs> like probably go we get. We've been to the doctor and the doctor got to check your testicles. You know, cough and you know. Um, happens. It doesn't do that. <laughs> we got the same doctor, right? <laughs> you love telling. So you had, that's even worse because if his doctor doesn't do that <laughs> and you're the only person getting, the same and doctor. you're the only person getting this, we do not. No, no, this is not even medical anymore. My doctor's a G though. He does it reluctantly. Wait. Like he does it because he has to. Like, you know, it's one of those. Yeah. yeah. So, what? so, so, so he do does it? it with his back facing you. <laughs> So he just like, but so look away. his back is facing you while he's oh. checking your and oh. your junk is checkup is whoa. So what does? But the worst is this happening at the doctor's the worst office? Do, yes, the worst doctor experience I ever had wasn't my actual, like, primary doctor. So early, mm. early twenties. Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> so this is like first woman I've ever had unprotected sex with, mm. and now I'm paranoid. You know, we break up. I'm like, oh, no, what if I got, you know? So I'm like, I'm going to go get tested. First time I'm going to get tested, get ran for everything. So now the doctor pulls, you got to pull your pants down, all that stuff. Doctor got the flashlight looking in the pee hole doing everything. <laughs> that's <laughs> never, that's so, never happened to me. So he's there. And now the they doctor. don't, your doctor that, cannot tell. If you have an infection by looking inside a pee hole, <laughs> let let us just but listen. So that is not listen. you're being molested. So listen to what happened. So then he's there and he looks at my penis, looks at me, looks at my penis. So he's he does he's and, bent over and looking now, at it. And now I'm like, fuck, I'm about to die. Whatever you about to tell me, I'm about to die. And then he goes, you know you have vitiligo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was gonna be something crazy. Like, like Michael Jackson? Big he D Express. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wasn't even <laughs> checking to moving. see if you had a disease. He molested you. <laughs> I'm sure there's some type of number or class action lawsuit you could sign Big up D for. Big D Express. This is, this is crazy. You know he got that Lego? Oh! <laughs> uh, That's crazy. That's wild, son. And I was like, Oh yeah, and I guess that's, they that's crazy because they're supposed to swab you and then send for for lab results. <laughs> nah, it's he real can't big. tell anything by looking, so he's just there looking inside. No, no, it, like he didn't see. He didn't say had yeah. vitiligo because he looked inside. Yeah, it just because the skin know. tones. Jesus. He's so he was like, studying it. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> Express is moving. Big D Express. What you thought? Tell me what you thought. What you thinking? What you thought? What you thought? 
If you can change your thoughts, you can change the world. So much more to life than chasing diamonds, gold, and pearls. Lately, it's been debated. They may be getting the greatest. I'm joking, there's no debate. You can't ignore the great. See, I'ma switch the world up with my 15 seconds of fame. Tell you a little story about way back when. Snotty, no shorty, rocking scuffed up tin. Still drop a triple double on your whole damn team. So much on my mind that it can't recline. The thought of cloud nine seems so sublime until you get the cloud nine and the sun don't shine. These niggas' grass not greener than mine. The thief of joy is what comparison is. And I'm so much better, don't compare me to them. No, no, don't compare me to them. I'm so much better. Than what you thought, what you tell me what you thought, what you think and what you thought, what you thought, what you thought, huh? What you thought, tell me what you thought, what you think and what you thought, what you thought, hey, what you thought, huh? What you thought, tell me what you thought, what you think and what you thought, what you thought, what you thought, huh? What you thought, tell me what you thought, what you think and what you thought, what you thought, what you thought, huh? What you thought, my crew will ever be caught slipping, you tripping. Lil' homie, we on the mission. To enlighten the masses, acquire some assets. A few accounts that I can stash some cash in. Without rhyme or reason, depending on the season. We just try and get it. This could result in creeping. Police investigation, we get from silent treatment. Forever granny's baby, your society's heathen. Views don't align, but you still pledge allegiance. Born to be your beacon, shining like on the legion. Yeah, I'm wide awake, still feel like I'm dreaming. I got no time for sleeping, up battling Demons up battling demons. I got no time for sleeping. Still feel like I'm dreaming. Yeah, I'm wide awake. Yeah, yeah, I'm wide awake. Hey, I'm working what you thought. Tell me what you thought. What you thinking? What you thought? What you thought? What you thought? Huh? What you thought? Tell me what you thought. What you thinking? What you thought? What you thought? Huh? What you thought? Tell me what you thought. What you thinking? What you thought? What you thought? Huh? What you thought? Tell me what you thought. What you thinking? What you thought? What you thought? What you thought? Huh? What you thought?